The following is a presentation of ESPN on ABC. What does it take to be a superhero? You gotta have superhuman speed, strength, senses. You gotta think quick on and off your feet. But with great power comes great responsibility. A superhero is a leader of men. They give hope to entire nations. The hope of reaching heights never before seen and seeing things they never thought possible. Tonight is not good versus evil. Tonight is hero versus hero. The Sean Watson, the Orange Slash, the seasoned veteran against Lamar Jackson, the Cardinal Street, still in the midst of his origin story. Even the setting for this duel has a name taken out of a Marvel comic, Death Valley. When the clock hits zero, only one shall be victorious. It's Louisville versus Clemson, a Saturday night superhero showdown. Death Valley is alive and electric on this perfect autumn evening. What a setup for this showdown between unbeaten teams. Welcome to ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC and this presentation of the ACC on ESPN. We have a QB duel in Death Valley. Lamar Jackson, the new sensation in this sport. The sophomore has created 25 total touchdowns in four games. But Deshaun Watson is the steely veteran, determined to get his tons on offense clicking tonight and silence some of the hype surrounding number three Louisville. As they come calling against number five Clemson, a game with enormous impact on the looming playoff. And welcome to Clemson. Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreet, Samantha Ponder, and Tom Rinaldi will join us. We know you're like us. You've been looking forward to this game ever since we saw Louisville demolish Florida State. We've been thinking about this test for the Cardinals in this setting. Kirk, if they pass it, you've seen the schedule. They are on the inside track for a playoff. Who would have thought well, that? This is a big opportunity for Louisville. If you think about what they did in the month of September, especially the Florida State game that you and I watched, they go from being, wow, a really good story in September. If you get out of Death Valley on a Saturday night with what's in front of them, they become the story in college football after the first five weeks. This is a lot for a young quarterback to handle, but so far, Lamar Jackson's been up to the challenge, literally. He has been amazing to watch because it is a rare ability to run and throw. Defenses have tried to plan for him. They've tried to take away his ability to run. It's just much easier said than done because it comes down often to the number of games. You can see right in an example against Syracuse, they only have seven guys in the box. And if you include the running back, you've got eight to block those seven. Now you're giving him room to run. And if you let him run downhill, it will be a long night trying to stop him from running. So later in the game, they say, you know what? We cannot let him run the ball. We're going to put one more up to stop him. My problem is, with his ability to throw, now it's one-on-one -on, -one on the backside. And here's a matchup with a safety against his best receiver, James Quick. So if you're Brent Venables, you've got to mix up coverages. You have to start by taking away his ability to run the ball and realize that you're going to leave your corners on islands. But I think Brent Venables, it's in his DNA. He'll be aggressive, and he'll try to negate and slow down Lamar Jackson from running first. We'll see how it goes. We think Patino's going to be aggressive, too. I think he wants to throw the ball around. That's what Bobby's game plan is. Meanwhile, Deshaun Watson running an offense here that gained 500 yards per game the last 11 games hasn't quite met that standard so far this year. Yeah, but I think tonight's a different approach for the, the philosophy of Clemson and their coaches. I think you'll see Deshaun Watson more involved in the running game, and I think they feel it has to happen because they realize that when they run the ball, it creates more of a rhythm and it sets everything else up. This is in a playoff game against Oklahoma last year. You can see what he can do running the football. He's not quite Lamar Jackson. Jackson, but he still can make things happen with his feet. When he runs, it sets up everything else because the safety, the linebacker, everybody has to freeze for just a moment. And if he can get you to freeze and make your eyes get in the backfield, 
look at the precision passing and the accuracy downfield from Deshaun Watson. So Louisville runs very exotic defense with Todd Grantham. They'll try to confuse this quarterback, which is tough to do. But in my opinion, if Clemson's going to kind of get out of this rut, they're going to have to run the ball with Wayne Gallman and also Deshaun Watson more than they have all year. Yeah, 80th in the country in yards rushing so far. If the Tigers can protect home turf, they are very much, of course, in the conversation. Their visit to Florida State doesn't look as tough as we thought. No, th this is a big opportunity, and I think I really expect Clemson to play their best game. Will it be enough? We don't know, but I think this will be the best they play, and you're right. You look in front of them, they get through Louisville. It sets up perfectly for them as well. We will give you inside access to the grandest entrance in sports as the Tigers make their way from the west to the east and run down the hill after touching the rock. That's coming up from Clemson. The Nissan pregame rush with Stan Verrett, Mac Brown, and Mark May is next. After this message and a word from our ABC stations. All right, Stan, thank you. Lamar Jackson searching for the focus he will need for his biggest test in college football so far. Despite all the hype, he retains the humility. Teammates don't even think he owns a copy of the Sports Illustrated with himself on the cover. Deshaun Watson, meanwhile, has heard all the hype about his counterpart, but he has a quiet determination for this game, determined to get Clemson's offense clicking to 2015 standards. This has been the Nissan pregame rush. Kickoff from Death Valley is coming up, but now we'll look inside Nissan's Heisman house. To set the standard, we have to be the best. Turn the headphones up, or make the windows roll up. I make the hands go up when I show up, and I blow up till I pull up weight. Holla! Jackson, look out! He has seized this national stage. Hungry. I just stay home, but I like to win, you know. Ambitious. Hungry. That's the reason why I play this game. Uh, for moments like this, just hungry. Inside Tiger Stadium, an eerie quiet as they await the Clemson team about to begin their bus ride ritual that began the 72 home finale. It was suggested by a player, Ben Anderson. They put the chips in, guaranteeing they are all in for this game. And Kirk, they just got their pep talk, the guys are amped up. Now they get crammed together in buses, fully padded, sweating. It's not for the claustrophobic at this moment. It's very different. And from any other entrance in college football, like you said. Coach just got done saying, let's go do this, 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 and then, and they're used to it, but then instead of running down the hill from the locker room, they load up on these buses. They go on the west side, they go along the north, and then enter from the south, three buses, the offense, Davo Sweeney, that's in number one bus. The defense is a louder bus, number two. The reserves bring up the rear, and this is their destination. This rock that was brought from Death Valley, California, placed atop that hill by Coach Frank Howard. It's been touched by the Tigers for exactly 50 years now. It's been chipped away a couple times. You can see the damage. It's now well protected. And then they'll run down that 26-degree hill. It's steeper than it looks and make this grand entrance. Sometimes the bus is a very quiet curve. The defensive guys tend to be louder than the offense. Sometimes they'll get a beat going in there. Yeah, the, the offense is thinking about their assignments and execution. Defense is getting sky high. They're getting fired up. One time they knocked a window out. Kind of an over-aggressive headbutt broke the glass. They've been cautioned against doing that. Two right turns are involved. West and along the north side. Stadium is actually laid out in east-west configuration. When they get ready to make that, that final right turn, they'll be 50 yards from getting off those buses. That's when the players say the crowd noise, they get a glimpse, and it comes up to another excitement level. They're getting close. Slightly uphill journey. Some guys say it's a blur, some guys say it seems to take forever. They'll gather at the gates, and then a the cannon shot will cue their run down the hill. Lamar 
Lamar Jackson of the Cardinals saw this two years ago. Deshaun Watson, one of the captains for the coin toss. He told us he wanted to run down the hill. Didn't get to tonight. enough to ever witness this you will not forget it perhaps the grandest entrance in sports now which side will handle the emotion and execute in the showdown game we've seen it go both ways Kirk games here in the past you're right it could go either way the emotions play such a big part in the game early after not just this entrance but what's at stake and the way these teams have played literally in this year it's been in a tom rinaldi with coach bobby petrino chris thank you very much coach so much hype and focus on your sophomore quarterback here what do you expect from him to be successful tonight oh he's going to come out and play relaxed and just do what he does get the ball to his players mix it around utilize his ability Go out there and have fun, have a big smile on his face. If you're successful tonight, what will the difference be? I think it'll be our ability to stop their run and for us to make big plays on offense. Thanks very much. Good luck, Coach. Thank you very much. Let's go across the sand. Coach, there's been so much talk about how to stop Lamar Jackson, but in your mind, do you have to contain him in order to win this game? <laughs> yeah, he's a great player. We've got to tackle him. So what's priority number one when he has the ball in his hands? Tackling. Oh, well, that made it really Let's simple. That's all you got to do. It's really not any more complicated than that. we got to tackle. All right. Well, then I'll catch up with you about that at halftime. Chris? Yeah, it sounds simple, Samantha, but it's been very difficult to get a hand on number eight. He's so slippery, so speedy and elusive. Deshaun Watson brings more big game experience into this matchup, of course. 48-6. and six. That's the one loss record for Clemson under Dabo Sweeney here. Clemson won the toss, deferred as we expected, and as we expected, Louisville will get the football first. And they've been a very fast starting offense. Touchdown inside of the first five minutes of all four of their games, three times scoring on the first possession. More emotion than we usually see from Deshaun Watson. No doubt about it. I think he is very, very inspired because of Lamar Jackson and the success that he's had and the attention he's received. Deshaun's still out on the field. 
Yeah, he's as if this up. crowd needs any more reason to get amped up. He's waving a towel around. As you said, very out of character. You don't see him show very much emotion. How will that translate to his execution? Special teams, a problem for Clemson a year ago. They gave up three kickoff returns for touchdowns, including one to Drake in the championship game and one to Samuel in last year's narrow win at Louisville. And number one is deep. I've caught a lot of big games in here. I, I don't think I've ever heard it this loud. Wow. Hugel boots it, and Samuel steps up to take it. Hit hard, short of the 25-yard line. And here comes Lamar Jackson. Play relaxed, says Bobby Petrino. Can he possibly do that tonight? Well, I think it's his personality, and I think that's what we've seen from him these first four games. But this is a whole different obstacle tonight in this environment against this defense. And that's why I said he's got to handle the adversity of being on the road. Patience with his running game, because that's what they're geared up to do. And they've got to hit some big plays in the passing game, because the style of Clemson, defense that Clemson plays, there's going to be a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities over the top. Brandon Ratcliffe, fine back, three straight 100-yard games behind Jackson. And they flag a false start. This is a team that's gone on the road in the Carrier Dome. It was amped up at Marshall, but that crowd about barely half the size of this one tonight. First play of the Both game. Start. 83, offense, five-yard penalty. First, First play of the game, the tight end, Mickey Crum, with a false start. Remember. They've not had to deal with this. That's why I said adversity for Lamar Jackson. Handle the adversity. That's just not for him. That applies to the entire offense, the entire team. On first and 15 now. Again, a whistle and a flag. This time it's the right guard who moves. This isn't a noon game at Louisville at home against Florida State. It's interesting. I asked Bobby Petrino this week about the crowd, and they said, you know what? We're, we're used to playing in big atmospheres. We're used to dealing with crowd noise. Everything's a hand signal. Everything's a sign from the sideline. We, we're, we're fine with crowd noise. We practice in it all week. And, until you get in it, it's very, very different, especially Lamar Jackson's still a young quarterback. He faces a first and 20, they pitch it, it's low, Radcliffe scoops it up and is knocked down by Kendall Joseph, the middle linebacker, after a short game. Here, Clemson's defense and Brent Venables, it's Louisville attack, they do it on the ground and through the air. When they run the ball, there's a lot of option football, and if you're defending Lamar Jackson, you want the ball in the running back's hands when he has that zone read. You don't want him to keep it, you want him to put it in that running back's stomach. Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator. Quite excitable. Reggie Bonifin, the converted quarterback, in the backfield. Jackson, he said, fires a dart over the middle, incomplete, trying to get the ball for the Staples. Good coverage by Tankersley, their best corner. That'll be a great matchup tonight. Tankersley will live on an island. He is one of the top corners in the country. Took a back seat last year to Mackenzie Alexander, who was their top cover man, left early, plays for the Minnesota Vikings, and Tankersley has taken over. Cardinals have been a great third down offense, but not third and 15 in this kind of environment. Let's see if they decide to rush three and drop eight, or they bring the pressure and come after him. Jackson flips it over the head of L.J. Scott, who came out of the backfield. Two penalties to start the possession, undoes it. Christian Wilkins on the pressure there, Kirk. Yeah, they, they showed that they were going to bring pressure here, and then ended up dropping right back here. Rush three, drop eight, make it very, very tough for the young quarterback to have to read eight defenders in coverage, especially there on third and long. Ray Ray McLeod, who's having a breakthrough year as a receiver, is the punt returner. Mason King, the freshman from Louisville, to boot it away. Three and out for this prolific offense to begin this showdown. McLeod had some space, but chose to play it safe and make the fair catch and showed Deshaun Watson 
and the Tigers will take over at their 41 yard line. Uh, a veteran in these kind of atmospheres. He has quarterbacked and engineered a lot of big games over the last two and a half years. Right now, people are wondering what's going on with Deshaun Watson? What's going on with this offense? I think you'll see a different attack tonight. I think you're going to see him more involved in the running game because it opens up every aspect of this offense. His decision making against a very complex third down defense will be very, very instrumental. And also, here's a guy who can make throws downfield. We talked about it in the open. He'll have chances tonight to make those plays, especially to Mike Williams and Ray Ray McLeod. Cardinals defense has been nasty with the pass rush so far this year. McLeod in motion. They hand it though to Wayne Gallman. And he breaks the tackle and gets into Louisville territory with a first down. A quiet determination by this guy to finally get going. Yeah, they, they want to get their running game going because it, it affects the tempo. They feel that they can go tempo, up tempo. It can affect Clemson in the communication, get them out of position, and they can look for some big plays. 12 yards on the opening carry. Empty backfield again. He likes the quarterback draw on this look. Instead, Fire is incomplete. He was knocked down as he threw the ball, tried to get on the sidelines to Mike Williams. And they, they will bring pressure, and it's coming from right here. They see empty. They feel like nobody can pick up pressure. They are a pressuring defense. He got the ball off. He has an internal clock tonight. He wants that ball out of his hands. They've worked on it all week, emphasized it all week. 2.5 seconds or less to get the ball out. Gallman in motion. Watson fakes it to him, rolls out. Tiptoes along the sidelines, picks up about five. It'll be third down. What's been overlooked here in these first four games, so much talk about Lamar Jackson. What gets overlooked is Todd Grantham and the Cardinals defense. They are they are very, very effective with an unorthodox style. We'll talk more about that later, but they will bring the pressure on third down. Tigers need five. Watson will look to those play cards and the coaches for his adjustment. So good pre-snap. So hard to fool. Louisville doesn't rush a bunch of guys. And a throw over the middle. Almost intercepted. Making a break in the ball was Tremaine Washington. Washington. He's got to step up tonight because Shaq Wiggins, their best cover corner, is out. Unbelievable play by Washington. They have confidence. He reads the route perfectly, undercuts the tight end Leggett, and gets that right hand. Almost came up with a heck of an interception there. Great read and great coverage there by the junior. This guy's dangerous, Kirk. He's their other corner, Jerry Alexander, the guy who really destroyed Florida State. 69 yard return for a touchdown. Had a later 61 yarder. He might have scored if he hadn't cramped up. So Andy Teasdall boots it high, doesn't give Alexander a chance, and they'll knock it dead just short of the goal line. Great job on the coverage team as Tankersley got down there, and Jackson's going to be pinned back a foot from his own goal line for their second possession. So this is the adversity we expected to see tonight for this Louisville offense. Look for every play to make sure any part of that ball did not break the plane. The front of that white line doesn't matter where Tankers Lee's feet are. It's all about the football in college football. And they are satisfied the call was correct. And here's the view from the progressive pylon cam. As you said, it's not the foot, it's the ball. The ball is really close to the goal line. And Jackson will throw from the end zone and is batted down. And they have it a word with the quarterback. Well, he had an open man there on the blitz. Christian Wilkins, one of the best interior linemen that you'll see. The blitz comes from out here, wide open, and Wilkins playing. He's a defensive tackle, but he's had to play defensive end with the injury to Austin Bryant. Does a great job of timing that up. Great athlete, knocks the ball down. They're right in front of that student section, loudest part of the stadium. 0-4-3 start for Jackson. They hand it off. And the eye formation and busting loose is Jeremy Smith. He's the short yardage back, but makes a huge play out across the 35 before Jadar Johnson drove him out. Watch the block on the left side by Christian. 74 opens it up. A great block by the fullback Atkins. That was well designed and well executed by the left side of that offensive line. And I think big Jeremy Smith was surprised the power back had room to run there.
Number 34 got 34. They put him in there because they wanted a hammer for just a yard or two to make it safer. Instead, they get out of jail. This time, Jackson keeps it, and he's dropped in the backfield by that man again. What a start for Wilkins, Kirk. And this is an example of how Clemson wants to attack. You're seeing blitzes from here and here. They're trying to basically collapse the speed and the playmaking ability. See all the orange jerseys? They're attacking from the outside and then trying to get a push from the inside. They do not want to let him outside, and they're doing everything they can by instead of staying back, they're coming after him. He lost a bunch of weight. He's still 3'10 playing defensive end with that kind of quickness. On second and 17, they hand it off to Smith inside. It's going to be third and very long. This defensive line, I would argue, is one of the top in the country. And that's with a lot of losses over the last couple years. Think about some of the defensive linemen that they have had, even last year. Kevin Dodd, who's in the NFL playing for the Titans. Of course, Shaq Lawson, who's up in the NFL. They, both those guys left early. They've asked. Austin Bryant maybe to come in. He got injured. Christian Wilkins, who is a defensive tackle, had to move outside at 310 pounds, and they still have a dominant group across the board. That's a key tonight for Clemson to defend this offense. Second, third and long already. It's going to be third and longer. Another false start. And was the guard look like Hunter? Yeah, Hunter, the left guard. False start. Number 50. We're, we're not even five minutes into this game. Not even four minutes into this game, and we've had three penalties on the offensive line. It tells you how the home crowd can affect a game. This offensive line that manhandled Florida State's defensive front at home. A tough start already. He's made it very difficult for the quarterback here. And third and long, Jackson. Dropped again, just cannot escape as Ben Boulware, the loud and aggressive leader of that defense, had the sack. Well, they're going to blitz him. I told you that this is how you attack Lamar Jackson. You have to take away the running game. You get him to third down. Ben Boulware, you bring both your middle linebackers right into the interior. Confusion up front. They're having a hard enough time with a, with a false start, let alone a late, well-disguised blitz from both Boulware and Joseph up the middle. They are coming after the young quarterback tonight. King debooted away again. A better kick as McLeod backpedals all the way to the 22-yard line. And the Cardinals coverage team down there early. There's a flag near the tackle. Looks like a push in the back there. Gary Patterson is our ECC referee tonight. During the return, legal block in the back. Number two on the return team, 10 yard penalty, first down receiving team. And the game, Kirk, with the defenses of flex so far, that's a big play. A 61 yard punt by Mason King, plus the penalty. So Clemson will not have good field position for possession number two for Deshaun Watson and company. Saturday Night Football on ABC, brought to you by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy, and Dickies, the world leader in performance workwear. Tigers backed up on their 10, Kirk, as we check tonight's Chick-fil-A impact players. You know, for this Clemson offense, we talk a lot about Deshaun Watson. Mike Williams has got to make some plays. He's going to get some one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Guillermo in the middle. They've got to be able to run the ball. Keep Kelsey, 55, against the run. And then James Hearns, along with Devontae Fields, they'll be pressure all night when Clemson throws the football. Keeper from Watson cuts it up after faking the pitch and gains about eight before Drew Bailey stopped him. It may seem like a small gain, but the field flipped completely after that punt and the penalty, Chris, that you mentioned. And now Clemson finds themselves backed up, and anytime Deshaun Watson runs the football effectively, that sets up other things in the offense, other play action opportunities. Watson from the pocket, loops it downfield, and over the head of a streaking Mike Williams. Mike is the guy that. Broke his neck running into the goalpost in the opener last year and has been 
working his way back, but tremendous potential. Yeah, second and short, if there's ever a time to take a shot. We just talked about how important Mike Williams is. He's going to be matched up most of the game against Alexander, who's only 5'11", but he plays physical, and he feels he can run stride for stride with the bigger Mike Williams. But he'll have plenty of opportunities to try to make a play in that passing game, and Alexander will, too, to defend him. On third down, Watson, the keeper, cuts it back. And they'll move the sticks. Still awaiting our first completed pass of the game. But Watson, as you suggested, Kirk, running early today. Yeah, I think he'll run 15 to 20 times tonight. When they were really humming last year, he averaged close to 15 to 20 carries in the bigger games. And now they're able to get their tempo going as well. They feed Gallman right up the middle and just trying to bowl over. Devontae Fields, the linebacker, he is a physical runner, 1,500-yard runner a year ago. The reason I put uh, Guillermo up there, the center, Jay Guillermo, is because, Chris, you know from watching Clemson, they've not been able to run the ball very well. And it's easy to look at Deshaun Watson and Wayne Gallman. It really starts up front, and they've got to win that battle up front with his leadership in the middle at center. Gallman again bounces it. Breaks a tackle, and has a first down across the 37. Offensive line with two newcomers still waiting to gel with their communication this year. He follows the big fella here. Tyrone Crowder, the right guard. He's able to get around him. Look at him, about 340 pounds. Now that's what he can do. You give Wayne Gallman just a little bit of wiggle room, and he's a slasher. He's so elusive. He just hasn't had a whole lot of run to room, a room to run. Watch 55. Boom. Picks up the block, the uh, linebacker. He's able to make Chucky Williams miss. And there's some big yards there, again, in this running game for Clemson. And one of those linebackers for the Cardinals, Stacy Thomas, the junior from Miami, being looked at. This has been a defense that's really featured the linebackers in this 3-4 scheme so far. A chance to check in with Cassidy Hubbard in the studio for an update. Hi, Cassidy. Hi, Chris. Dr. Pepper championship drive update. And after a slow start, the tide's starting to roll with Sean Evans. With the sack, Steven Jackson coughs it up, and Ronnie Harrison says, thank you, takes it 55 yards for six. Alabama up 17-3 over Kentucky over on ESPN. Chris, Herbie, back to you. All right, thanks. No surprise there. Time got to visit the Razorbacks next weekend. Thomas has helped off. And the Tigers have moved the ball from the 10 to the 37, running very effectively. Watson, first completed pass for either guy tonight. It's a very short play to McLeod, who's knocked down by Washington. Got to love how Louisville attacks defensively. Such confidence in, in the open field. Seen Tremaine Washington make a couple plays tonight for the Cardinals defense. That time, did not hesitate. Recognized the formation. The odds are, the trends show that they're going to throw the ball out there with a blocker in front of him. He closed the gap and made a quick tackle for just a yard gain. And Goldman motions out, and Watson running all the way, but this time running into heavy traffic in the middle. It'll be a third down and about seven. Great job in the middle of that defense, just holding your spot. Right here, right here. Just do everything you can. You don't have to make the play, but by holding up against those double teams, it frees up linebackers to close the gap down and make the play. See if the Cardinals bring their own pressure on third down here. Very difficult to figure out where the pressure is going to come from in this scheme, isn't it? And they're showing blitz. Crowding the line, coming after Watson, gets good protection. The ball is deflected as it goes out. Williams tried to make the catch, and they're calling it a catch at the 45. Bounce off his foot. And now, now someone comes in and another official does not hit the ground. They take it away. It's incomplete. And it, fourth down. It actually hit a Louisville defender's hand. It was Hearns right here, 99. Watch him. He gets his hand up there. Ball is thrown very, very low. And let's see what it hits after another Louisville. It definitely no. hit the ground. Williams tried to sell it. Say, I caught sell my it. foot. It, 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 <laughs> the, the crowd wants another look the at crowd, it. React at the it. crowd's seeing things through an orange lens. <laughs> <laughs> it, seemed, it seemed pretty clear to me that they hit the ground. 
So Hearns, as you said, got the hand up, and that time was Louisville's pressure that was effective. Brown still doesn't, doesn't like the call, but it's too late. And Alexander driven back inside the 15. And once again, Jackson will have poor field position. Nothing doing for the Louisville offense so far. Midway first quarter, still scoreless. Well, just a couple possessions into this game, and Brent Venables making it very clear he is coming after Lamar Jackson and the speed and the playmaking ability, blitzing from every different angle, showing different looks, coming off from the edges, trying to make sure they contain here. Here's a third down example, disguising the blitz, coming late with their linebackers, unable to pick it up, and really harassing and doing a great job up front and mixing it up so far here early. Jackson rolling out. And a low throw incomplete. Still looking for his first completion, Kirk. He's 0 for 4. He's been sacked once and tackled for a 7-yard loss in a design run. We just talked about the, the, the package that they showed the pressure. So what is the adjustment from Bobby Petrino? Move the launch point. Move him away. Get him to the outside, away from all that pressure. He's very comfortable throwing on the run. And that's a little bit of a cat and mouse game going on right now between Petrino calling the plays against Brent Venables here trying to bring the pressure. And Petrino, one of the most respected and feared play callers in college football. Samuel motions into the backfield. Jackson fakes it, keeps it, and is brought down after a short game by Kendall Joseph. It'll be third down again. The linebackers this week for Clemson have their eyes set on Lamar Jackson in that option running game. They adjust to the running back, but they are looking to stop number eight first and foremost. After two third and really long plays, third and six feels a little more manageable for Louisville. Absolutely. Empty and with five receivers. And the Tigers showing pressure at the middle again. Adjustments on both sides right now. Got to hurry. Just got it away from the pocket. Jackson blows down, sacked again. Scott Pagano, a backup tackle along with Cleland Farrell. They're walking these linebackers up. They're showing pressure, not to mention this defensive line can get after the quarterback. They want to try to affect the eyes by bringing pressure, spying with the linebacker, Boulware. They're doing a really good job of not only affecting the quarterback, but also having an impact on that offensive line there on third down. They just tried to grab Pagano coming through. There was no holding call. Yeah. They still couldn't stop him. <laughs> right. Another three and out for Louisville. And King boots it away. And McLeod retreating. And once again, Pretty conservative attitude about the punt returns at Clemson. It's kind of been that way for a while. They'll take over at the 31. This beautiful, calm evening. Our aerial coverage by Goodyear. Make every drive a touchdown with superior performance from Goodyear Tires. Goodyear, official sponsor of the college football playoff. How about the end of the Tennessee-Georgia game today? Wasn't it won three different times? Twice by ten uh, yeah. Tennessee, once by Georgia. In the Two middle. Hail Marys in just a few seconds. What, what a day. Another great day of college football. Crazy Carol finish North Carolina, Carolina, Florida State. 54-yard field goal. Misses an extra point and hits a field goal. Second conference loss for the Seminoles. Adam Choice, the sophomore from Thomasville, Georgia, is in the game. As ball is looped near sideline. Williams makes the catch out near midfield. And now they're going to say incomplete. Washington again was battling him with the ball. And Washington does a heck of a job. Boy, he has accepted this responsibility into the boundary. Ball hits the ground and is well defended again by Tremaine Washington. Chris, you talked about Wiggins coming into this game and the fact he's not in. They have to play more of Washington. And so far, boy, he is really playing well. Sweeney feels they missed that. Pass interference and Watson again picks his way up the middle and is just bent backwards after a three yard game. Deshaun Watson on the quarterback defense. He's going to run the ball. It's going to get physical. He knows that. He understands that. He was able to train in the offseason. No knee injury to worry about. Added to what, about 10 pounds of yeah, muscle in his lower body? Pounds. He looks great. You, you can see a difference as soon as you walk up to him from where he ended the year last year against Alabama to coming into this year. Third and six. Choice is the back to the right of Watson. Louisville brings the heat again. And Watson steps up. 
cannot get away. Wrestled down by James Hearns, the junior from Tallahassee. It'll be fourth down. You're also going to see a good job of disguising. This guy looks like he's coming, but actually he ends up dropping. The pressure ends up coming from over here. So they walk up pressure, and at the last second, they end up showing that, hey, we're not coming to the left. The pressure is actually coming to the right. And again, this is such, both these defenses do as good a job as there is on third down. We did hype the quarterback duel, and it may still unfold, but these two are two excellent defensive football teams. These are complete teams. Clemson and Louisville. Not just about the trigger men. He's dog. Get it away. And it's a low boot. Alexander just steps back and lets it bounce. And it's going to roll dead inside the 20 yard line. This week's Monday Night Football matchup an NFC battle. Eli Manning and the Giants visiting the undefeated Minnesota Vikings. Six o'clock coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown. Giants Vikes at 815. Also on the Watch ESPN app. Once again, Kirk, poor field position for Louisville. They've had some self-inflicted wounds, and they have faced a charged up and ready Clemson defense. 30 total yards. This is Radcliffe. Able to spin back after a short game. Jeremy Smith had 34 yards on the one run. They're in negative territory in all their other plays combined. Yeah, they've, they've not come close yet. They're crossing midfield. Their, their average starting field position is their own 10-yard line. And this, you know, this, this is a team, Chris, that because of the way Clemson's defending, you're going to start to see them try to get more to the perimeter, whether it's the run or the pass, where they roll out the quarterback. They've got to have some success, success to the outside, away from the teeth of the Clemson defense. On second and six, Jackson finally completes a pass, and this is Staples who moves the sticks out to the 30. Yes, we, ju we just talked about how if, if they're going to attack into the middle to take away Lamar Jackson in the running, why not take a one-on-one -on -one matchup to the outside? Picks up a great block there by the wide receiver quick. Has some room to be able to pick up a first down. That's a, another reaction there from Bobby Petrino. And that's just their second first down. They've had a touchdown scored in every quarter so far this season. Very much in danger here. Jackson on first down delivers right again. They, they take that cushion with Staples and they gain about five. If you're going to blitz me and you're worried about Lamar Jackson in the running game, my answer is get the ball out of the hands quickly, work the perimeter, work the edge, and that can get them out of this mindset of blitz, 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 and then you can go back to Lamar Jackson in the running game. And second and five. They hand it off to Radcliffe. Who are trying to wrestle him down. You see the determination from this senior out of Miami, one of the co-captains of his team. Tough run. You're going to take away the quarterback here on the zone read. Here's a read. They're going to give him a, a give look right here. Defensive end stays wide. And when he does that, it's a give look. And look at the great blocks downfield there to give him extra room. Kenny Thomas with a nice block, the left tackle. Out of the pistol. Jackson keeps it. Gets around the edge as the Tigers lost contain that time, Kirk. Yep. All of a sudden, you start to make some quick throws to the outside. You run the ball into the middle, and now it's going to open up because the defense starts collapsing. Great adjustment. The blitz is to the inside. Now you get to the outside where they're not setting the edge. It's the first time tonight we've not seen them set that edge, and Lamar Jackson, with that quickness, is able to make them pay for it. It's a 16-yard run. First time either offense has threatened tonight. Radcliffe. He's a perfect complement to the electric explosiveness of Jackson with his tough running. Low center of gravity, really the leader of this offense from Miami, 5'9", 210 pounds. Captain, been through a lot. He has done a great job this year. He has three straight 100-yard games, and as you said, because of that power, it really forces the defense to be aware of him. Final minute of the first quarter, and the Cardinals are marching on second and five. They test the middle again and push the pile. It'll be third and two now. They are forcing him to hand the football off. They'd rather take their chances with Radcliffe with that zone read game than make him pull it and go around the corner. So they're taking the quarterback. He's doing a very, very efficient job. Remember I said 
at the beginning. One of his keys, patience with the running game. This is exactly patience with the running game right now for Lamar Jackson. L.J. Scott is the back, but Jackson's going to throw on third and town. Takes a shot downfield, then the catch is made inside the five by Cole Hickettini, the tight end. So you're attacking with the running game. You're attacking, you're attacking. Everybody's concerned about it. And all of a sudden, people are out of position. Everybody's up here, and he sneaks behind them for an easy executed play for the quarterback. He's called for it now. He wants it right now. Buller lucky to get back there and stop him. Well, in the third and two play, they get 28 yards and 15 minutes dominated by defense until the last couple of minutes. And the Cardinals have moved it 81 yards, knocking on the door. End of one here in Clemson. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Welcome back to ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC in this presentation of the ACC on ESPN. Second quarter at Clemson begins with the Cardinals at the one yard line. First end goal after the big third down completion to Hicatini. Scott is in the backfield. Jackson trying to escape and fires a low ball. Scott couldn't come up with it. Heck of a job by Christian Wilkins at over 300 pounds keeping contained. Does a good job of forcing him back to the inside. He's definitely out of bounds there. Jackson did well to avoid the loss. Here comes the jumbo look. A lot of muscle in there for Louisville. And Smith. Nowhere to run. Bounces. Doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and goal. But it, this defensive line is getting a great push. This time it's Pagano, Scott Pagano right here, the nose guard. Watch the push in the middle. Such a key there of affecting the timing by that execution of the Louisville offense. Third down, you've got to get the athletic quarterback on the edge here. Whether it's an option or play action, roll him to the outside and give him that play action opportunity to run or throw. Instead, it's Smith again, and he dives for a touchdown as Louisville draws first blood, an 82-yard, 11-play march. Especially after the last play, that showed a lot of trust and confidence in your offensive line against this Clemson defensive line and your power back, Jeremy Smith. Remember, they got pushed back into the backfield the previous play. This time, they go to the left. It's clean, and it gives Smith a chance to extend for that touchdown. Progressive highline cam showing you the fourth rushing touchdown for Smith. This offense is all about the big, flashy, explosive plays. When they need a tough yard, they go to 34. Impressive drive after a very shaky, self-destructive start to this game for the Louisville offense. Picking has been a problem. This is Blanton Creaky who took over the duties in last week's game at Marshall. And the lefty does drive it through with no problem. So Louisville quieting this pandemonium in Clemson for the moment. We'll see if Deshaun Watson can answer Jackson's touchdown drive. Tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. on ESPN, NFL Insiders Sunday edition. All the news stuff you need for your fantasy team. Then 11 o'clock, the new Sunday NFL countdown. Chris Berman, Trent Dilfer, Charles Woodson, Matt Hasselbeck, and Randy Moss take you right up to kickoff. He's so chilled over there. The guy from Pompano Beach who played his high school ball at Boynton Beach in South Florida. And Louisville, Anthony George to kick it away. Tavian Feaster is a true freshman who's got C.J. Spiller's old number. They unretired it for this talented guy. And he brings that across the 20. They expect him to have a big career here at Clemson. He sure will. Let's go back to that last drive. There was a player that really stood out to me, the third and two. Third and two, they go to their jumbo package. Everybody expecting run, taking chance, throw the ball downfield to Hickettini. If they end up missing that, they probably will go for it on fourth and two, but still, to take that chance and to give the look 
with the jumbo package and the power back that they're going to run it and instead play action. That's what set up the touchdown there to be able to get it in with yeah, Jeremy Smith. have been so tough rushing the passer, but that's a tough matchup for him. Oh, yeah. Ciccatini. So Deshaun still got to get going. He's one for six passing. He's run it pretty effectively. It's time they hand it to Goldman for a short game. For one for six for one yard passing. And again, I, I, I really believe that the passing for this offense is created by opportunities when they start to run the ball. He, now, he would tell you he's missed a few throws early this year, first four games. He has yet to really find his rhythm, and it's not just him. The receiver's got to get some separation and break away from this coverage. Again, with an empty backfield, you almost expect Watson to take off. The Cardinals expected it and stop him for a short gain. It'll be third down, about five. Yeah, they're doing a good job themselves. We've talked so much about Clemson defending Lamar Jackson. Remember, Deshaun Watson can run. He can take off. He is a threat as well. And, and right now, this defensive line doing a good job of getting extension, looking into the backfield, not being worried necessarily about getting upfield, especially on first and second down. This is the down where they like to bring their pressure. Tigers one for four on third down. It's been a nightmare against the Cardinals the last two years on third down. Figure out who's coming right now. Who, who, you're, you're making a call as a center. Where's the pressure coming from? Well, Leggett motions over to the right. And he whistled. There was still time on the play clock, but it's a false start, Kirk. False start. Number 34. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Ray Ray, Ray, Ray McLeod, the running, the receiver at the top of the screen, did that a little bit anxious, but that's what makes Louisville so tough in their 3-4 three, scheme. Three down linemen, four linebackers, and they, they will come from different places because guys have great skill to rush the quarterback, but also they can drop. So it's not just they're just pass rushers. A little different look here on third and ten now. They bring five. Watson gets it away. Leg it over the middle. A nice dart for Deshaun. His first real positive pass play moves the ball to the 45. See, they, they, they show pressure, and then they're going to bail, and then the pressure ends up coming late. But what happens is, by because they're turned and running, it opens up a crease. The game 24. Crank up the tempo. Williams breaks a tackle and scoots to the 40 of Louisville. And here comes a flag. They'll tack on 15 more for a hit out of bounds. How about the yards after the catch by Mike Williams? Very, very nice job. 6'3", 225, picked up a block. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. Number 11. So they get 24 in the third and 10, then 16 yards in that, plus 15 for the penalty. Well, great. Changes quickly. Yeah, yeah, it sure does. Leggett, the tight end, had a great block, but Chucky Williams completely whiffed on the bigger Mike Williams. That's what set him up to get down the sidelines. Watson thought about flipping it to McLeod, now throws it short, and Travion Thompson, the sophomore, takes a loss after the catches. Cannon got him. He, he, this secondary from Louisville is as is, is instinctive a group that you'll see. They played a lot of football. Cannon's a backup. When they get into a nickel or dime, five or six defensive backs, he gets a chance to get out there and play. But so far, we're asking what's wrong with Deshaun Watson. The passing game, again, has everything to do with the pass rush and the coverage. And it up inside to Gallman, and he breaks the tackle. Wayne Gallman still barreling for a first down inside the 15. Remember what I said about when they get Wayne Gallman going, much like Louisville, it sets up big chances down here. Leggett, the tight end, who's off to the right, is a receiver they like down here, along with Mike Williams, who's up at the top. Flipped across the middle and intercepted. Intercepted by Jair Alexander as Watson... Made a tough decision down there near the goal line. I just said, run the ball, run the ball, and then where's Mike Williams? Louisville's looking at the same scouting report that we're looking at. They have confidence in Alexander to make this play, but watch the location of the football. Watch how it's thrown behind him instead of in front of him. That's what gave Alexander a chance to catch up, get underneath it, and intercept it. If the ball is thrown out in front to Mike Williams, it's a touchdown. Ball's thrown behind, he tries to come back, 
and it gives Alexander a chance to make a big play. Great ball skills by that corner. He was an offensive player in high school. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Pacific Life. Helping generations of families achieve long-term financial security for over 145 years. And Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. Alexander's second pick of the season. He was a three-way high school star. Charlotte returner, receivers. He's got the best hands on Louisville's team. Now, the receivers kind of dispute that, but well, this dude's run a sub-4-4, too. After watching him against Florida State in this game, he is legit. Jackson cannot escape. The pass rush traps him again. That was Albert Huggins, one of the backups. Well, he's forced to step up into the pocket because of this man right here. Does a good job. You cannot let Lamar Jackson get outside of you on the bootlegs. Forces him back inside. Contain, contain, contain. Force him back to the rest of the defense. That prevents him potentially doing what he did to Florida State when he was running free. It's more sacks on Jackson tonight than he had been trapped the entire season coming in. Steps up. Nope. Cannot escape again. Well, he's still alive somehow. And now we'll just flip it away to the bench. Did well to avoid a fourth sack. Kendall Joseph. Oh, I had him. And actually, actually, they picked up a blitz. This is a blitz that got him earlier when they brought linebacker pressure right up the middle. They brought Kendall Joseph and Ben Boulware. It was picked up nicely. But the secondary does their job in coverage. He was fortunate to get away from that pressure that time. But good coverage by the Tigers downfield. Yet another third and very long for Louisville. They need 17. Jackson, again, has to just take off and will not outrun a whole bunch of Tigers. There's a flag down. It was on the edge where the back, L.J. Scott, was going out for a route. Tigers think it's on Louisville. Warren Wiggins. Uh, he, he hit the receiver that he's covering really was not going to be a factor in the play, but he grabbed onto his jersey. The official was all over that, caught him. Big third down, and the Louisville Cardinals offense catch a break and get the first down. First down Louisville. You can see it's third down. They move it, not automatic. They just Need two yards though instead of 17. It's a lot more manageable. It's Radcliffe in motion. Jackson keeps it, accelerates, and shows that balance. He wanted a lot more, but it's plenty to move the chains. Yeah, he, he all he's going to do on this is make a, a play action fake here and then follow the right guard around. It's like kind of a power read. He senses if he has a hole, he's going to pull it. That time he just followed the guard around Hunter. Picks up a nice crease here, and Wilkins again involved in trying to knock that ball out of there. He said, Oh, I almost had about <laughs> 70 yards. Flips it short. Nicotini, who made the big play down to set up the touchdown, knocked down inbounds. He's about six. He's a junior college player out of San Francisco, athletic, impressive. Improving blocker. He's gotten a look from the scouts too. The senior. You see him play based on his skill set and his size in the NFL. That was Jackson following Radcliffe after faking it to him. It'll be third down again. Another adjustment from Bobby Petrino. They're, they're going to give my quarterback on the zone read a, a give read. We're going to fake it and just follow right behind the running back. If they're going to stay wide, we're going to we're just going to. Instead of giving it, we're going to fake it and go right behind him. That read normally would be a give to the running back. Two tight end look on third and two. Jackson backpedals, flips it for a screen, and a diving catch is made for a first down again. That's Hickettini working on Bulwar. They, they've found a matchup there, haven't they? Well, Hickettini's a matchup nightmare for anybody because he has the speed to be able to run away from linebackers and the size to be difficult for safeties. 
That's why he's going to play on Sundays. He's been battling through some some injuries. You can see he's getting closer to getting to 100 percent. But a nice job by Lamar Jackson baiting them because of his how fast he is. They get him out of position and they go back the other way against the fast flowing defense. Oh, Jackson wasn't expecting the snap there. It's loose. A scramble for the football. Clemson's got it. Boulware recovered it as a miscommunication between center and quarterback. I don't know if Lamar Jackson wasn't expecting the snap. You can see that Bobby Petrino is talking to Hughley, the, the center. He's looking around, not ready for the ball. The ball snapped. It looked like Radcliffe might get on top of it, but he did not. And Bulwer's all over it. They've been super productive, but also turnover prone. That's the 11th turnover this year. They're minus three at the moment. Hasn't hurt him because they've been playing with the big lead, but that sets up Clemson at the Louisville 45. Take it to Gallman, flip it near side to Arteva Scott, and Scott gets some nice blocking on the edge in a big game. Scott having to move inside to the slot with Hunter Renfro out injured for this game. Yeah, hasn't had quite the opportunities that he enjoyed a year ago with that move, but an unselfish player and willing to move in there until Hunter Renfro comes back. They're stacking these receivers again on both sides. Watson from the pocket, looks down the field to Dion Kane, and he collects it for a Clemson touchdown! <laughs> 33 yards for the talented sophomore who had a troubled end to last season. Suspended and sent home before the playoffs. He's had some drops so far this year, but he worked wide open and made no mistake that time. Well, how about he's been through a lot. He's, he's the first month of this season. That time, he's just making extra sure that he held on to the ball. High snap. Good job there by Seth Ryan, son of Rex Ryan. They put the ball down so Hugo could knock it through. Well, they, they take advantage of the turnover here. They're actually going to attack off to the left. What you see is Leggett striking right down the middle. It's going to attract this defensive back. And because of that, now he goes downfield and makes the throw. And a good job by Kane. But they got the secondary out of position. Washington, Deion Kane has been waiting a long time to have an impact on a football game. And he just did in tying it up. Cell phones lighting up Death Valley here as the Tigers have cashed in a little fumble at two play, 45 yard touchdown drive. Watson to Kane, Hugo to kick it away. And we'll see how Louisville offense responds to that miscue, which really changed the course of this first half. You don't really expect to buy Hughley, their veteran center, to make a mistake like that. Ready for our Affleck trivia question? Louisville trying to do something here that. Hasn't been done too often. The last team to beat two AP top five teams within the first five weeks of the season. Of course, Louisville beat Florida State when the Knowles are ranked up there. Trying to do it for a second time. The last team to beat two AP top five within the first five weeks. That's the key. Two back look. Option. Jackson spins and twists forward. A short game, though. Kendall Joseph is right there. What a different night running the football so far for Lamar Jackson. And now nine carries, 17 yards, still trying to find his way. This Clemson defense determined to start with their blueprint of stopping this defense, or this offense, by stopping him and his ability to run the ball, make him throw the ball for 60 minutes downfield. Hit and drop behind the line there is L.J. Scott. Terrific penetration right away. Richard Yergin. Wow, he came in in a hurry. Watch him up here. Watch him attack. Gets upfield again. Keep the edge to the defense. Completely takes him away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he takes away Scott. And, you know, they've been giving the read of taking the quarterback. That time, I think they surprised the quarterback by taking the running back. It's a misread. Third and 15. Jackson, flick of the wrist, fires it downfield. Diving interception. 
Jadar Johnson, who made the pick to seal the win a year ago against Louisville, comes up with this back-to-back -back turnovers for Jackson's offense. You talk about range from a center field, free safety. He's sitting back playing man free in the middle of the field, and he has some real closing speed. Ball is up in the air, and, and honestly, Chris Johnson's just playing backyard football. Seventh career interception for the guy who was a three-year backup, now emerged as a starter, makes a big play, and the Tiger is back in business near midfield in a 7-7 game. Once the defense rises up, a second takeaway in two possessions. And Jackson's known for pretty superb deep ball accuracy. And you can have to look at that pick momentarily. Meanwhile, Clemson at the 45. And another design run for Watson. He shows the strength, loses the ball, comes out, it's a turnover, and Louisville recovers at the 40. Chucky Williams came up with it. Boy, that a, a good job here by this defense of ripping at the ball. James Hearns, the junior, who's known for his pass, pass rushing skills, does not give up on that play, and his, Watson's fighting for yards. He looked, he looked to me that he was still up, and they ripped at that football. You can see him right there. Yeah. Ball is out. Ball His is hand out. Hit, but not the elbow. You're no, right. the hands, the hands down, but the elbow is not. Hearns, very, very aware to pull that, pull at the football to try to bring it out. That's the third time this season already that Hearns has forced a fumble. He's one of the guys that tormented the Seminoles in that beatdown. Watson, I was going to compliment his extra strength. Kirk. You can see how he's stronger in the legs, fighting for yards, but it did cost him that time. So a takeaway for Louisville's defense. Four turnovers already tonight. Grant Cliff loses the ball again. It's a scrum. Clemson says they've got it. They come out with it. And it is a Clemson takeaway. Carlos Watkins with the recovery. It's turnover epidemic in Death Valley. I think this was a backhand, backhanded effort by this Clemson defensive line. They're slamming and angling right there. He smacked at the football. I think he also ended up coming up with it. Watch his hand come in from Watkins. Actually he hits his own man. His own man McNeil trying to make a block on Watkins and then Watkins able to jump on top of it. Back to back to back turnovers. And it's a Clemson ball again inside the Louisville 40. Watson on the play action fake takes a shot downfield. Scott will draw a flag. Interference. Alexander that time guilty of the flag as he tried to recover. A another poor throw here by Deshaun Watson. Look at Scott. He's got him by three yards, four yards. Ball is underthrown. And because Scott's working to get back to the ball, and you can see that. Alexander is actually trying to catch up to Scott and with Scott coming back to the ball he, he ends up running into the defender. Emily moves the ball to the 24. Watson still not looking like himself no, throwing the receiver. football. That's a touchdown. And a Goldman bursting free touchdown. Clemson cashes in another takeaway. Get the feeling tonight, if Louisville's going to turn it over, it's going to be very costly, and has been again. 24 yards on the run for Goldman, his fourth rushing touchdown this year. He wasn't smiling yesterday when we met with the players, was no, he? No, no. He's been waiting to explode. Yeah, absolutely. And the Cardinals face a deficit for the first time this season. Guillermo, who is one of our guys we talked about in the middle of the line, 57. Watch his block. Helps Chip, gets up to the linebacker. The safety's actually split. He kind of waited for them to get involved, but unable to do that. And Wayne Coleman finally, Chris, gets into the end zone for the Tigers' lead. The joint is jumping as Louisville jumped to a 7 0 lead. The Clemson's. Capitalized on two takeaways to build a 14-7 lead midway second quarter.
Le'Veon Samuel is back deep. And he'll be driven deep into the end zone. Now this offensive line's been somewhat maligned here in this first month. Why can't they run the ball? Watch Jay Guillermo, the center, chips on Bailey, gets up to Thomas, sets up a nice crease, and you can see, you give Wayne Gallman just a little bit of room to run, he can get to the end zone in a hurry. One of the iconic watering holes in any college town is the Esso Club, just down the hill from the stadium. Folks, right. not lucky enough to have a ticket, but enjoying things down there with a <laughs> cold one or two. That's pretty sweet. Got the big screen up. So this offense, Kirk, three turnovers already for Louisville. See how Lamar Jackson answers here. Three straight drives have ended in turnovers. Smith is the back in the pistol, and now he'll motion. And Jackson keeps it, but a flag before the snap. And receiver moving. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Check with Cassidy Hepworth in our studio. Thanks for his Taco Bell studio update. Another exciting finish. Number 18, Utah. Trailing Cal, but with a chance to win at the one with three seconds to go. Stuffed at the goal line. They had seven plays from inside the 10 on their final series and couldn't convert. Cal hands the youth the first loss of the season. Guys. Wow. Thank you for that. And the surprise in the Pac-12. Once again, Kirk, they're, they're behind the chains. He self-inflicted wounds for Louisville on first and 15. They hand it off and straight ahead. Some tough running to get 10 of the yards back there by Smith. It's a heck of a run there by Smith and Louisville offensive line. Remember, the, remember we talked about the cat and mouse game with Brent Venables and the Clemson defense and, and Bobby Petrino. And remember, because of the concentrated effort to try to take away the interior of the uh, ability to run the ball, they went to the outside. Smith cuts it back and powers forward, still fighting for yardage. It'll set up a third and two. That battle continues to go on. Clemson, I don't think, is going to flinch with their approach and, and what they've tried to do coming into the night. That is blitzing and attacking and coming after the Bobby Petrino offense and Lamar Jackson still not able to really get going running the football 10 carries only 18 yards they have double the number of running plays than pass attempts so far for Jackson 24 to 12 on third and two will play action Jackson again loops it downfield and a jump ball nice play to break it up by Tankersley Staples was the intended receiver fourth down well, when you when you sell out at the line of scrimmage We're gonna have a penalty here on a Louisville it looks like a Louisville the, uh, the receiver Staples actually got in a dead ball Penalty watch Tankersley time this up and go up You have to have confidence in your corners when you're gonna put ten guys at the line of scrimmage Number two in the offense taking his helmet off on the field of play 15 yard penalty Fourth down. Yep. Number two's first mistake, I think he felt there was some interference. Yeah. He was getting grabbed by Tankersley. A little hand fight. Well, <laughs> but there's no call. You can't take your helmet off and yell and get a 15-yard penalty. That's the it. mental mistake. But he can make a strong case for that. This is it at the end of the play. You can't do you can't look at the official and make your case with your helmet off. He did it right in the face of the official. He's gonna drop the laundry on you. McLeod a chance to perhaps make a return here. King is backed up. It's a high kick away, not particularly deep, and so yet another fair catch for McLeod at the 44. The Tigers try to add to their seven-point lead, 444 to go before halftime. Athletic trivia Athletic. question. Trying to figure out the last team to beat two AP top five teams in the first five weeks of the season. Got to go back a ways. UCLA. Game day was at that game. I in Alabama that. early when the yep. Bruins got him and then went ahead to beat Michigan. Bobby Petrino is livid on the sideline with these officials. Livid. And, and I can understand why Staples was frustrated. I mean, it, but the thing is, Tankersley did a good job of turning up and looking for the ball. And 
He's entitled to go up for that football and fight for it. Goldman hit behind the line. Jake's free, still running. Gets into Louisville territory. Nice first down game. Okay. Even without great blocking tonight, number nine's getting yards. He, he's got a different look to him. His legs look live. I mean, he is he is running with a different wants to shoot personality there, to come out. Yeah, he's only averaging four yards a carry coming in. That's way below what he averaged last year, but he is getting to bust loose. Adam Choice replaces him. McLeod, though, in motion, takes a little pop pass, makes a cut. Ray Ray into Louisville secondary. Moved the sticks again before Harvey Clemens stopped him. You attack through the middle between the tackles with Wayne Gallman. And you either go to a jet sweep or a quick pass to the outside, and they go tempo, and a lot of times they'll try to go downfield vertically. You got a dozen yards. Comes in motion again. This time it's Watson in the pocket. Shoots it downfield for Kane again, who makes a diving catch for a touchdown. His second tonight. Welcome back, Deion Kane. Great, good for Deion Kane. Guy that was sent home from the national championship game. Failed a drug test. Dabo didn't flinch, sent him home, didn't go through spring ball. He's been off to a slow start this year, coming back to this team. Has had a bunch of drops in the first four games. Incredibly fought, a talented five-star recruit out of the Tampa area. But if Tony Elliott says, you got to find your mojo. You got to get your mojo back and just have fun, play ball. You know? Yeah, that's tonight he's pretty fun tonight so far. Remember, I just run the ball into the middle, run the jet sweep to get the defense's attention to the outside. You come back with a play action, one on one, and exactly how you see Clemson attack a year ago. That's the recipe. Run the ball, quick look to the outside, get your eyes affected, and then get behind the coverage. They did it exactly the way you're used to seeing this offense when they're humming. And that's a nice job by Watson throwing the ball in front of him for the touchdown. Load up the bow and shoot the arrow. Both of them have connected with Kane tonight for his two touchdowns. And suddenly, Louisville, which hadn't trailed in any game coming into this one, finds himself down by 14 points with 347 to work with before halftime to chip away because the Tigers will get the football to begin yeah, the second half. Deferred, the, deferred the, uh, the coin toss. They, went, they won the toss and deferred. So Louisville with 347 remaining with the crowd back into the game. This is an important drive for them with the Tigers getting the ball to start the second half. Louisville have not had less than 177 total yards in any first quarter this year. Samuel's going to try. And he is knocked down. Excellent job so far by the coverage teams for Clemson. Dorian or Daniel, one of the starting linebackers, was down there to make the hit. Aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear. Long drives demand superior performance on the road. Goodyear, official sponsor of the college football playoff. So we just talked about how important this drive is. The last three times they've had the ball, six plays, seven yards, two turnovers. And again, poor field position. That's been another feature of this first half. Jackson from the pocket delivers. Catch made by James Quick. First time the top receiver in this team has made a catch. Johnson in coverage. He finds the matchup that he likes. Soft coverage. Able to find it, as you said, his, his explosive receiver that time. With that cushion, just get underneath it. They need any positive yards and picking up a first down to get this drive going. LJ Scott. Not much room in the middle there, but they do move the sticks for a first down. Cardinals with all three timeouts to use. A lot of people still wonder about Lamar Jackson consistently throwing the football. We've seen it. We've seen what he can do, but against a better competition, can his group of receivers and can he make the throws when he has to downfield under duress? The way the Tigers are coming after. As you said, Venables wanted to make that point proven tonight. There he is scrambling, flips it underneath, and the catch is made by Scott, who's knocked out of bounds. Clock will not stop with 2:48 to go. 
First time we've seen the big fella tonight, or at least called his name, Dexter Lawrence. Five star recruit out of North Carolina, 6'5, 340 pounds. Well, how do you find a true freshman with that kind of size and strength and quickness? I mean, how rare that is to start at that position, right? Unbelievable. Second leading tackler of the team coming in. Jackson over the middle. Again, a completion may. He's been the main weapon tonight. Bettini. It's another first down. Hickettini is, is doing a good job, whether it's man to man or zone. He has such a feel when they play zone and sitting in there between the linebackers. And you can tell how confident Lamar Jackson is when he gets back and he looks to throw the ball to number 18. I think he's become his security blanket this year throwing the football. From the pocket, Jackson fires. Deflected right off the hands of Staples and Johnson was in the neighborhood trying for his second pick. The ball's thrown right, hit him right in the face mask. And that ball is thrown right on the money, and that is a first down if he's able to hold on to that across midfield. Instead, it goes right through his hands. That was a laser to Staples. Tigers bring some pressure. Jackson picks it up, works down the field, and in coverage there, Quick got tangled up with Ryan Carter, and a flag comes out. I think that was just a hat from the official who was spotting that. We're going to move on to the next play. The official just threw his hat because the defensive back, Carter, did a good job of forcing Quick into the boundary. Good pick up there, so no flag, third and ten. Here comes the noise. And here comes, again, they're either going to rush three and drop eight, which has been successful, or they're going to bring pressure. It looks like it's three and dropping eight. Nope, they're coming late. Jackson takes off, sidesteps a man, shows that incredible elusiveness, and picks up a crucial first down on third and ten. The spot is very close, but I have to measure. Thought he had over across that line now they're going to spot it back and they'll bring out the chains when he dove let's take another look at where he, he went down when he there dove, the ball looked like it, it may have come a little bit short how about how elusive he is here watch this thing <laughs> i mean that is incredible come wallace thought he had him he extends but it just based on our line i mean it looks like he's about right Maybe 10 inches short. And the body was across, but the ball just short. So if you Petrino here, get that chain pulled taut. Yeah. yeah. Good for him for that effort. Just by an inch, it is a first down. And so the drive continues. Minute 51 before halftime. Good for him for that effort. Still the three timeouts. Minute 51. Really no sense. Of urgency, Chris, for these guys because they they move so quickly. Anyway, minute 51, three timeouts, already across midfield. Now it's just about execution. BMW halftime report. Stan, Mac, and Mark coming up. How many defenders have felt that feeling in the in the career, high school and college of Jackson? He kind of makes you look foolish sometimes. Yeah, Wallace is not alone. On first down, Jackson fires complete quick weaving into the secondary knocked down at the 23 and now louisville's in business We're starting to, uh, late late penalty here as well but there's a big void there between those linebackers that these receivers and tight ends are starting to set up camp another frustrated look from bobby petrino after the play personal foul unnecessary roughness number nine on the offense it's still 15 that's Jalen Smith, another receiver down there, and some serious mental mistakes by this Louisville team in the first half. Bobby Petrino probably a combination of being frustrated with the officials. That's a big play. You can go with momentum. This is, see the receiver, Jalen Smith, coming in here a little bit late. The ball is, he's already been tackled. Comes in late, gets caught up with Ben Bullware. So they get back 15 yards of a 25-yard gain. Now they flip it out in the flat there, and Scott... Dances down the sideline, gets inside the 30. We're driven out by Van Smith. The backs are an important part of the passing game. They'll, they'll use three different running backs as receivers. Number 90 on the defense, 15-yard rear of the run, automatic. Now they got Dexter Lawrence, the freshman, with a personal foul. A chippy second quarter here. Well, he body slammed Lamar Jackson. Ben Bullware and Dexter Lawrence after he threw it. 
trying to send a message to Lamar Jackson, but he had already thrown the football, the official, all over this. It could have got Bullware. Yeah, watch Bull Bullware, and then right here, the extension, right there. Yeah, that is a no-brainer. And, you know, we've seen mistakes and emotions flying from both sides here. This is a big drive, by the way, in this football game. First down at the 14. Jackson keeps it and shows the deceptive strength that he has. It's easy to focus on the speed and shiftiness for a wiry guy. He's pretty strong. He sure is. And he's not afraid to get into that pile and lower his shoulder. He's hot right now. The referee trying to push him away as Jackson was frustrated. For him to react like that, something's going on at the bottom of the pile. Not for the first time. Uh, and I think that's Ben Bullware doing something. Ben Bullware may have grabbed his face mask. He is hot. For him to react like that, he's got to keep his cool. He's got to keep his cool. Everybody's looking to him That's for the answer. That's what he wants to achieve by doing that, yeah, right? And, yeah. And, and ben, Bull, ben Bullware, a middle linebacker, scrappy, tough guy, the leader of the defense. You get to the bottom of a pile, and, and defenders have been known to do things. Right there, you can see Ben Bullware's got him around the neck, grabbing him. Who knows if he's getting, a, getting underneath his face mask. But for Lamar, yeah, Jackson had a react, hold on there. for Lamar Jackson to react like that, something's going on. To Tom Rinaldi down on the sideline. Absolutely. He is so hot right now. He is shouting that someone grabbed his neck under that pile. Grab, grabbing my neck. They grabbed my neck is what he shouts. He's got the helmet off, as you can see. He's been remarkably composed, guys, throughout all the different frustrations and mistakes. Every time he's come to the sideline, there's a new sign because he's claiming that he was grabbed in that pile. And, Tommy, here, here's a great look at Ben Bowler has him. The whistle's blown. I mean, he's – by the way, he is squeezing with all his might there, and that's why Lamar Jackson – should have reacted the way he did but again the defense's job is to get under the quarterback skin yeah. if they can great job on calling the timeout just let everybody calm down especially number eight jackson still got the ball and bulwer has got him this time and wrestles him down it's a one-yard loss you know he did this a couple of times against florida state he misread this he misread this read right here he's got to be able to give this instead of keeping that if he gives that, it's probably a touchdown. And Bulwer playing his role. He is fired up. He's in the face of everybody, teammates, opponents. And he can get into the head of the quarterback. He knows how competitive he is. Now that he's mad, he wants to make plays for himself. Final minute, third and five. Jackson escapes again. Lost it to the end zone. Jump ball incomplete. Hikatini was the intended receiver. Tankersley was all over him. That time, not a linebacker, a corner on him. They have to make that adjustment. The ball is just thrown up. Look at it. Look at the grabbing right there. That's what that's what the Louisville sidelines is frustrated. It wasn't the end of the play when they go up like this. It was before where he was grabbing him and hold, holding on to the jersey. The left arm got around the body, so no call. And here is Blanton Creaky, the kicker. This has been a little bit of a shaky situation for Louisville. Again, it hasn't really cost him in these big blowouts. A 26-yard attempt to cut the lead to 11. And he just sneaks it through. Ricky, the sophomore from Shelbyville, Kentucky. The replacement kicker for the last couple of games. And Louisville not looking for three there, Kirk, but they do cut into the lead. And you can see the frustration continues for Jackson. He's got, he's got to maintain his poise and, and use his competitive spirit to his advantage. Got to, he's got to be able to contain himself. Brent Venables talking to his leader, Ben Bullware. Bobby Petrino has spent 30 minutes working the officials and being frustrated with some of the calls that he's seen out there. It was a 76-yard, 13-play drive at 310 for Louisville. And to try to stop the bleeding with Thompson getting the football to begin the second half. I, and I know what he's upset about on that last play. As I said, it wasn't the end of the play when Tankersley went up. It was before they went up where you could see Tankersley grabbing on to Hicatini's jersey to try to help get in position. So Tavian Feaster, the true freshman returner at the goal line for Anthony George's kickoff. He'll have a chance. Feaster. Knocked down across the 25, and with 32 seconds to go, 31 now. Evo Sweeney content I, to play it conservative here? We're up here, and we should ask Sam and, and Tommy about this, but 
it feels like it's getting a little chippy. It, it feels like the officials need to do a good job of talking to Bobby Petrino and Dabo Sweeney and the captains as they walk off at halftime and tell them, hey, guys, we're not putting up with it in the second half. It just feels like if you're not going to police it on the field, the players will start to police it themselves. So they need to make sure they take control of that. Well, penalties in the first half. Watson on first down. And they're not going to play it too conservative. They're going to go to Scott, who's across midfield. Tigers have all three timeouts. Now that's five seconds. Chris, that's Deshaun Watson. They're going to use a timeout here. That's Deshaun Watson, what you expect from him. Sitting in the pocket, a lot of noise and confusion around him. Locks in downfield to Scott and puts that ball right on the money where Scott can make a play on it. The play was long developing, but they pick up some big yards here, and they're thinking about getting points. Need about 20 more yards to get in field goal range for Hugel. Watch how long this play takes. Throws it before Scott's out of his break, and that's the relationship and the anticipation between a veteran quarterback and Deshaun Watson and Scott, who he's played with all the last year. I would actually say of all the receivers that he has back with Renfro down, Mike Williams missed last year. Ray Ray McLeod didn't play a lot last year. Artavis Scott was his go-to guy a year ago, and the guy that I think he feels most comfortable with as we sit here at week five in the season. Scott is the ACC career active reception leader at this point. 25 seconds, two more timeouts. Watson back, no pressure. Throws it down the middle of the field. A Leggett who just gets grabbed, an easy interference call. That time on the Cardinals, Josh Harvey Clemens. Felt he needed to do that to perhaps save a huge game. Yeah, we've talked a lot, Chris, about Hickettini and how Pass good a tight end he is. Defense, number 25, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. For Louisville, Leggett is a bigger tight end at 6'5", 260, but still gets behind Harvey Clemens, who, as you said, had, to, had no other choice but to grab onto his arm to prevent him from making that big play. Penalty moves into the 35 now with 19 seconds. Watson from the pocket delivers a low throw catch made at the 16-yard line by Williams. Now they're well within field goal range with 14 seconds, and they spend their second time out. Interesting that Louisville has a reputation with Todd Grantham of being an aggressive, in-your-face, challenge-you type of defense, and yet here they are in the closing seconds of this first half They've been somewhat passive. They've kind of been back, soft coverage, not taking away the easier throws. Remember, we saw Leggett make a play. This time he looks to the big receiver, Mike Williams, gives him a chance, low and away, and doesn't quite get out of bounds, so they got to use their timeout. Cardinals rushed for her, twisting and stunting, didn't get near Watson that time. I think that's always tough for a defensive coordinator. You, you know, your DNA, who you are, what you believe in is attack, attack, attack. And you get into that one minute offense that you're defending and you have to make a choice. Do we pull back a little bit, try not to give up the big play, the easy play, or do we stick to our guns and kind of come after them? He is, he's elected for the most part to sit back more and it's given Deshaun Watson a lot of time to throw the ball. And you get Deshaun Watson a lot of time, he is going to eventually find his rhythm and his confidence and ability to throw the ball. Hey, you saw 9 of 10 since that slow start. Watson hasn't yet been sacked. The Louisville team that had 15 sacks coming in. So this is a real pivotal moment here with 14 seconds to go. You know, do they get do they get three? Do they get seven? No one to get a ball right back to begin the second half. The Tigers potentially could, could blow this open. 14 seconds remain. You have a veteran quarterback. You have a timeout remaining. You have out of bounds. You have a first down that can stop the clock. You know Dabo Sweeney believes trust his quarterback. They are in attack mode. They still feel like they're going to take shots into that end zone. They've got coverage back here over top of Mike Williams. Try to take him away. Only three-man rush look for Louisville. And they pressure Watson, who's flushed out, delivers complete inside the five to Williams. Nine seconds to play. Well, a great patience. Great job of not giving up on the play by Deshaun Watson and his receivers fighting to get open. And not only that, I said first down and out of bounds, your best friend. They hold on to that one timeout by getting out of bounds here. And they still got one to, to spend should right. they get tackled in bounds. Great patience by Watson stepping up, climbing into that pocket. On 
First and goal, Watson fires high. Touchdown, Scott. And the Tigers extend the lead with five seconds before halftime. What a drive. 73 yards in just 32 seconds. Well, that is incredible. Incredible effort. And think about this, the emotion of that first half. Louisville cut it to 21 to 10. They're thinking that they got a chance that we got points. It's going at halftime. Regroup, get ready to go. And Clemson says, no, no, no. We're going down the field four plays. 73 yards and 32 seconds for a touchdown. How about how well designed this play is? You see receiver from the outside that actually is going to take the defender and Scott works here and follows him. He actually trails him. See the receiver right here? He's going to occupy the defenders and that will open it up behind for Scott. And the timing, not hesitating, getting that ball out before 11 D. Smith, the safety, could come over and dislodge the football. Perfectly executed and well designed there by Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott, the co offensive coordinator. And again, Artavis Scott has had a changing role now with Renfro out, makes his first touchdown reception of the season. And the Tigers with a 28 point second quarter. Three touchdowns within 401. And then that touchdown to Capit and Devos fired up. That's great. That was a great picture there. A lot of pressure when you go to a national championship game and you battle the way they did against Alabama and you return to Sean Watson and this offense is going to score 40 or 50 every game. I think they were pressing early. I think they needed a game like this to just be able to turn it loose and play and, and just be aggressive and have fun. Now a little spooch kick along the ground there and the Cardinals will cover it at the 40 with just three seconds to go. Not a whole lot to this, not many plays, four plays. I thought Deshaun Watson showed great patience, found his accuracy at a critical time in this game, made great throws, did, did a good job here of stepping up, got out of bounds there, saved their timeout, and then the big throw there to Artavis Scott for the touchdown. 32 seconds to go 73 yards. We'll look back at that drive, I'm sure, at some point later tonight. You pointed out to Kirk the Cardinals and Grantham got passive and they paid for it. Meanwhile, job number one against Jackson stopped him running. They have so far. And the quarterback we knocked down again. A fourth sack for the Tigers to punctuate this first half. Cleland Farrell got him. And the Tigers, after hearing all the hype about this high-powered offense coming into their house, have made a strong second quarter statement they will take an 18 point lead as you take it to tom rinaldi with petrino Th thank you very much chris bobby how would you assess your team's composure in that first half yeah we got to get our poise back you know there's a lot of stuff going out there on the field not going our way we got to just calm down get our poise back and go out and play we can't turn the ball over thank you very much sam well, Coach, 28 points in the second quarter. So to you, what was the difference in your offense between the first and the second? Well, we were running the ball well. I think we had one pass completion in the first quarter. I don't know if we've ever had one pass completion in the first quarter. But we just missed on a couple plays, turned it over. But, hey, they've just hung in there. Defense is playing great. We've, we've met turnovers. We've gotten them back. I, I think we might be plus one. I don't know. But we're right there. But bottom line is we're throwing and catching and we're running the football. And that opens everything else up. Really proud of how we're playing up front on both sides. Thanks, Coach. Chris, back to you. Yeah, they are plus one in turnovers. They were a combined five, a whole bunch of penalties, as Petrino said. A lot of stuff going on out there, that's for sure. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jackson, a little smile there. Got a big hole to dig out of. The BMW Halftime Report right after these messages. Ready for the second half, this ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC and a presentation of the ACC on ESPN. Tiger is up 18 at the break. It's been a fairly sloppy, very chippy, kind of a street fight feel to it. And the Cardinals have lost their composure and they got to find a way to get the quarterback going. Yeah, they do. And they, you're right. They do have to come out, hope for a three and out, keep their composure and keep battling. But I think the first half had a lot to do with Brent Venable's game plan, which was we're going to make Lamar Jackson show that he can throw the ball. We're going to keep him in the pocket. We're going to collapse the pocket when he throws the football. We're going to try to frustrate him, this time only rushing three. 
mixing up their looks. They brought pressure, they brought three and dropped eight here on a little zone read, trying to get a feel for where he should go with the ball instead of giving it. He holds on to it. Ben Boulware, who's been harassing him the entire first half, all over him and able to, I think, continue to frustrate this Louisville offense. And, you know, where do you go from here? You don't panic. You're only down 18. It's an offense that can score in the blink of an eye. I think you go back to getting the ball out on the edges. Get away from that pressure. They seem to have some success with that in the first half. I think that's where Bobby Petrino will try to attack that defense. His defense has got to get the ball back from Clemson to Sean yeah. Watson after a, a slow start. As Dabo pointed out, just one for six in the first quarter. But got to go into the second quarter. 28 points in less than eight minutes for Clemson. They'll try to add to the lead beginning here in the third quarter. This is Feaster. And Feaster picks his way out across the 25 yard line. Our Pacific Life game summary. All the gaudy numbers coming in on the Louisville side. Quarterback with 25 total touchdowns. Didn't have one in the first half. He was sacked four times. They had three takeaways. Trapped behind the line seven times yep. by that defense in orange. Uh, up to this game, they've been tackled behind the line of scrimmage seven times in four games. Tonight, in 30 minutes of football, tackle behind that line. What a plan by Brent Venables in the way they have attacked and then getting the ball back to their own offense. And Gallman, who scored a touchdown in the first half, he's been waiting for a really productive impact game. He's got 73 yards so far. To Sam Ponder. Yeah, Clemson fans have noticed that Wayne Gallman looks a little different tonight. I was talking to coaches about it when they came back out on the field. It just so happens to be his 22nd birthday today. So not a bad way to spend your birthday <laughs> night. 73 yards and the touchdown. No big deal. Pretty cool. He had a big game in the opener against Auburn. He was a workhorse there with 123, but not much since then. On the slant, in and out of the hands of McLeod, and a diving attempt. It's a pink. A circus grab by Chucky Williams off the hands. That wasn't the quarterback's fault. And it's the, it's the little things. Ray Ray McLeod, he, the ball is thrown right into his hands, goes off his shoulder pad, and into the waiting arms of Chucky Williams, who's paying attention, the leader of that secondary. How many times do coaches work on receivers? Catch the ball with your hands. It goes right through his hands off that shoulder pad. And that's exactly what this defense needed to do. Their third turnover that they've been able to create. They get the ball in good field position for Lamar Jackson. See if Wilbur can cash it in. Jackson fires far side. A sure throw to Quick. And Quick spinning for about a two-yard gain. Let's check with Tom Rinaldi. Chris, thank you very much. Talk to Lonnie Galloway, the co-offensive coordinator. No fiery speeches, no broken blackboards, if you will, during halftime. Instead, trying to settle the team and remind them to be composed, that they're in this ball game. They need to get out to a good start. Obviously, that turnover, the beginning that they wanted, Chris. Thank you, Tom. Lonnie also coaches uh, the wide receivers, co-coordinator with Chris Klamakis. On second down, Jackson takes off. And darts inside the 30. You get a glimpse of the acceleration we've seen throughout the first four games. Yeah, he gives a little look to the outside. And by just watch this, by looking to the outside, look at the defense react. They start to take off. And that actually opened up the middle there. And a nice block there. And the inside as well by McNeil to open it up. Cardinals in the red zone where they were forced to kick a field goal late in the second quarter. Now Jackson delivers a dart complete again and a hard hit delivered on Samuel a little slot receiver 5'7 170 and we talked you said what should you do do you, you just with with uh, Tommy Rinaldi talked about there's no panic they got they got a turnover go back to attacking the perimeter go back to attacking outside because by doing that if you have success it can open up the inside where of course that's where Lamar Jackson and Brandon, Brandon Radcliffe can run the football but it's gonna have to start on the outside Radcliffe Cuts it back, knocked down inside the 10. It'll be near a first and goal. I think they'll spot him with a first down. Here's an opportunity. This is typically where Lam this is Lamar Jackson territory. They've been so tough to stop in these first and goal situations because his versatility gives them so many play calling options, doesn't it? Absolutely. The zone read is always in play here. The play action off the zone read look where you get him away from pressure. Jonathan motions back in. They fake it to him and tripped up is Jackson. Again, quick penetration. 
Knocked down for a yard gain. And Bulwer helps him up. Now, now they're buddies. Now they're <laughs> After the choke maybe, maybe the, the officials half. talk to him. Maybe they maybe they talk to both teams. They try to run his move, huh? Yeah, yeah. They try to run a power read. Again, quarterback is reading the flow of the defense. He felt he should pull it and keep it, but not many yards there. Here's a three tight end look with the power back, Jeremy Smith, in the game. Nicotini, always an option, who's in motion here. Smith. Absolutely stuck. Hit for a loss right in the middle as Dorian O'Daniel filled. It's so crowded on the inside. He's coming from out here in. He is, they say he runs a 4 4 as an outside linebacker. And that time he didn't hesitate at all. Now, but see, now you're in third down. Now, now you into the hands of the defense and how they can try to attack you down in this area. Should be a huge win for the Clemson defense if they can force a field goal attempt. Jackson over the middle, wide open. Touchdown is James Quick. They didn't account for the senior leading receiver. James Quick is the go-to guy. I can't, I'm with you, Chris. I'm very surprised he's lined up here. And nobody accounts for him. They brought the blitz. Great recognition by Lamar Jackson, not only the middle linebacker, but the free safety came as well. There's nobody left there, and Lamar Jackson able to recognize that. Keep talking about keep your poise. He sure kept his poise on that play. And Quick raised his hand, just in case the quarterback didn't see him. Hey, hey you know, Lamar, I'm wide open. But a miscue on the PAT. So it's a 12-point margin. And that was a... A nice job by Robinson, GG Robinson. Here's the, here's the pick off McLeod's hands and the diving pick by Chucky Williams to set up a 36-yard touchdown drive, a third and goal. This will dart to a wide open quick. So Clemson has the lead cut in after the turnover, still up by a dozen. Acrobatic interception produces a short touchdown drive for Lamar Jackson, his first touchdown pass of the night. First touchdown that he's accounted for, adding to that total of 25 that he brought in. And the PAT blocked by the elbow of Carlos Watkins, so a 12-point margin as kickoff is short. And Feaster has a chance, spun around and across the 25-yard line. It's our All-State good hands play. The, the kick. Uh, the lefty very low. And big Watkins at 6-3. It's the arm up. Comes right through the middle. That offensive line gets penetration. It'll knock that ball away. Every point counts, Dabo. He has to be bothered, though, by the, the drop of McLeod. It's been a problem for this receiving core, which set up the interception. 16 drops coming into tonight. This is the first one we've seen this evening. Dahlman knocked down after a three-yard game. Birthday boy. And a great first half. It's an opportunity for Louisville. Crowd is kind of out of the game. Stadium's a little flat. Able to create a turnover. See if Deshaun Watson can re-energize this offense. Straight keeper. And Watson showing some strength. Knocked down just a bit short. Oh, the marker, third down. Not only a gain, but as I said, it, it, it helps the rest of the offense when they want to go to the outside with a quick pass. The jet sweeps. Anytime number four has a good run, that's such a big part, a big piece of the puzzle of this offense. On third and one, some traffic and some confusion in the backfield as Watson and Goldman nearly collided, and Drew Bailey makes the stop, and Louisville's going to get the ball back. Yeah, I think, I think Drew Bailey gets the penetration. You're right about the two running into each other. It's definitely some confusion with Wayne Gallman. There's Bailey 14 who just shot his gap and beat his man. And look at Todd Grantham's defense. Whatever they said at halftime to say, hey, boys, we're not out of this game at 28 to 10. We get a ball, but we get a stop. We get a ball. We score. We're right back in it twice now. The Cardinals defense does what they need to do to get the ball back to Lamar Jackson. Dangerous Jair Alexander back deep to receive Teasdall's punt. Let's 
opposite bounce and now feels it on the bounce and gets away. Look out, Alexander is dangerous, and they just knock him down, preventing a big return. Gets across the 30. How about Lamar Atkins on the punt return team, number 46? That ball trailed him. He's very lucky that that ball just happened to land back in the in the hands of the return man, Alexander. Who was alert to field it. Watch his, watch his left shoulder. Boom, left arm. Live ball. Very alert play by Alexander, who then made a nice return. So Louisville back to work, down by a dozen. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Ford. We go further so you can. Goodyear Blim souping on the tailgate scene down there. Give your ground game some confidence with superior performance from Goodyear. Goodyear, official sponsor of the college football playoff. So Louisville gets the interception, the touchdown, the block PAT, but a three and out. Now they get the ball back. The 32 trying to chip away at this once 18 point Clemson lead. Jackson fakes it to Radcliffe immediately, puts his eyes downfield. Now tries to buy time, spinning around, and he's finally knocked down for a short loss. Thought he might escape there. I, I'm surprised that he doesn't take off here. He, he has been he's, he's been so trained to be worried about the pass rush. You got people covered. This is Lamar Jackson. I mean, that's 10, 15, 20 yards. Take off. He oh. tripped over his lineman's leg there, Mahoney, trying to get look, away. Everybody cleared out with the receivers. Maybe your best play is number eight with the ball in his hands. Take off and go. So a fifth sack. On second and 13, Jackson over the middle threw it behind the streaking Samuel. And now a flag, a couple of them come in, was the receiver grabbed. It's going to be against Clemson. Yeah, he got in there a little bit early. Holding and defense, number 15, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. You know, Petrino had a lot to say about the officiating in the first half. He felt there was a whole bunch of clutching and grabbing and choking. Four official on that, that Louisville sideline. He, he got an earful, <laughs> and at times, maybe Bobby Petrino made the right uh, decision of going after him. But this time, it's pretty much a no-brainer. Wiggins is going to get there early. The left arm, he actually turned the smaller receiver, Samuel, with the contact. Radcliffe's got it. And he's got some room. Radcliffe into Clemson territory. Physical run down to the 43. Johnson and Bulwer combined to bring down the tough runner from Miami. Yeah, nice job here. Into the middle, into the teeth. An area that they've had a hard time running the ball. Mahoney, 56, leading the way there. Does a nice job. Great blocking. And here's that tough running from the senior, Radcliffe. For the 18 yard gain. Pass again, looking for Samuel and a misfire. Bullwear trying to stay with the small guy. It's a smaller target. Samuel, 5'7, 170 pounds out of Phoenix City, Alabama. You got to put the ball right there to give him a chance. We have not called the name of Jalen Smith tonight, if at all. It has not been. I've not seen much of him. He's a sophomore has been a big play receiver, a guy who was averaging 25 yards a catch. One play action. Jackson looking downfield, and that one intended for quick incomplete. Again, Jadar Johnson in coverage. It'll be third and ten. Plenty of time in this series to throw the football. He, he's back there waiting and waiting for these longer routes to develop with just great coverage. I'll tell you, I'm impressed with Jadar Johnson. Talk about range. A safety who can cover. Came up with a big interception earlier tonight. I remember he was the young man who made the comments about, oh, is that number, Lamar Jackson? Who's that, number eight? If he hurdles me, I'm going to grab him and body slam him. Yeah, he said it shouldn't be a problem to contain him. Well, he's playing well tonight. On third down, Jackson flips it complete. And again, it's Hickatini with a crucial catch and a gain down near the 20. His fifth catch tonight. The top of the route. Watch this move into the inside and then back to the outside. Hickatini with this little move. Stutter and go. 
gets the separation, and Lamar Jackson's going to make that throw. They gave him time. A great route by Hickettini, who's had a big night tonight. They're getting deeper and deeper into Tigers territory. Got 20 on third and 10. Now Jackson again looks to his left, lofts it to the end zone, trying to run underneath it is the staples that he can't get there. And he got a little greedy there. He had Bonifan in the left flat wide open, but he wanted to, I think he predetermined his, his mind there, wanted to go to Staples. Watch Bonifan cut to the outside. He waits and reads that. He's getting separation. That ball's thrown on the money. It's a first down, but I think he predetermined. He was going to take a shot there at Staples down the left sideline. Jackson keeps it and gets around the corner, dancing free inside the 10. Spun down by Edmund. How about the block here by Little Man? 5'7", 170 pounds, good read, pulls it. Hickettini's looking for somebody to block, but right there, Samuel on the block against the safety, Wiggins, gives him even more room to run. And there's the quickness and the suddenness of Lamar Jackson when he comes around the corner. They lost the edge of the defense there. Very quick 16-yard scamper sets up a first and goal. Into the noise at the Clemson student section. Short gain for Radcliffe to the five. How big is this next series of plays? Louisville can further cut into the lead. Make, make this make less than a, a one-score game. Yeah, make it a one less than a one-score game. Field say. goal makes it nine because of the missed PAT before. See those arms of Brent Venables? That probably means attack, attack, attack. But remember, here's the guy right here who they've been trying to throw to. So he's gonna block. Look. Jackson cut down at the one. It'll be third and goal. Boy, Ratcliffe with a big time block, Chris, to try to free up his quarterback. Watch 23, the running back here, Ratcliffe on a block on Ben Buller. Bang! Put him right on his back. I don't think he liked Buller grabbing his quarterback around the neck earlier in the game. And he spotted back closer to the two on third down. Little conference there on the left side of the O-line. A lot of big bodies for Louisville. All bunched together. Bobby, Bobby Petrino running down the sidelines and gets a timeout. Looked like there might have been some confusion. All the big fellas trying to figure out where, where they're going to line up. A crucial play coming up here. Louisville down by a dozen, but threatening. All right, partner, what's the personnel grouping? What's the play call in this crucial third and goal from the two? Uh, you always think that Lamar Jackson with the ball in his hands is, is the right call in these situations. But remember, Chris, earlier, they ran over that left side of that offensive line with Jeremy Smith in the, in the game, and he's back in the game. And they had success. It was, the result was a touchdown. It's a different look after the timeout. They had yeah. six offensive linemen and three tight ends before now, the timeout. Now you've got trips to the bottom and Hickettini to tight end to the top by himself. See if they're just trying to unclog the middle. The Tigers are all over. Look at look at him spying the quarterback here. It's Jackson all the way in a run, and they were ready for it. And Bullware drops him for a loss back at the five. It's fourth down. Really surprised. A slow developing play into the boundary where Benny Bullware and the boys are able to make a play. He shoots right through here. But look how long this play takes to develop. I mean, look at Bullware's not there. There's three other Clemson defenders. And Kirk, I think the loss may have changed the philosophy For sure. of Petrino. Freaky's on to try a field goal. Well, they had a lot of momentum on that drive. I mean, they, they were backing Clemson up, and then the timeout kind of killed a little bit of that. Every kick is an adventure for this team at the moment. Freaky having had the PAT blocked, he was good in his earlier field goal attempt, and this one is knocked through, but again, keeps the lead at nine as Bullworth, who got trucked on the previous play, knocked on his butt by the block, comes up and makes the big stop on third down. It's a good one on Monday night. Michelle McDonough and John Gruden in Minnesota. Giants and the Vikings. Six o'clock Eastern, Monday night countdown. 
815 kickoff also streaming live on the Watch ESPN app. Minnesota undefeated on the young season. Sam Bradford looking good. Went creaky to kick it away. Louisville able to climb back in this thing nine points so far in the quarter. And Clemson's offense is stalled. Turnover and a three and out. Feaster. Knocked down at the 25 yard line. This week's AP rankings brought to you by Allstate. Of course, this is one of the three top 10 matchups. Looking for a close of most of these matchups this season between ranked teams, top 10 teams, haven't been very close. This one is so far. Uh, the Michigan Wisconsin game was a, a great old school throwback kind of game. Where, where do you move Washington after that impressive you gotta move them. wood chip? Depending on what happens here them. tonight, but they're, they're on their way up. For sure. That was, a, that was Everybody watched that one. Washington, Oregon next week. And off inside, running right into a wall is Dahlman. Stacey Thomas, the linebacker. I said the last series, how, what an opportunity it was for Louisville because the crowd's kind of been taken out of this game. I don't know if the hay's in the barn for the crowd, the game's over. I don't know what's going on, but there's not a lot of energy in this in this building. And again, Louisville right now just quietly getting back in the game. Watson rolling out, launches downfield, and it's over the head of Kane, or excuse me, Scott. Samantha. Yeah, Herbie, to add to your point about the crowd noise, it's noticeably different down here, which is interesting because talking to some coaches at halftime, they all agreed this was the loudest they'd ever heard the stadium. And one of the guys around the program told me he's been here his whole life and has never heard it that loud. So maybe they just ran out of gas. I don't know. It's quite a statement. It's been loud over the years. Lots of big games in Death Valley. Here's that look again. Where's the pressure coming from? It's showing right. Will they back off at the snap of the ball? And come from the left. Let's see what they do. Back off at bring five. Watson trying to get away and does. First down. Still running. And shows the elusiveness into Louisville territory. A crucial pickup for the quarterback there. They, they showed the pressure and then ended up backing off. They come through here. They pick it up. And once they pick it up, watch this crease. And this is what Deshaun Watson does so well. It's Gallman now is. Watson is now outrushed his quarterback counterpart in this ball game. Lamar Jackson gets so much attention for how explosive he is, but Deshaun Watson is very effective, obviously. He's got runner. 23 there, now flips it to Kane and gets a block, and they move the chains again inside the 40. You know, what he recognizes is linebacker tra bailing on that, that third down and just started to run. He felt that, and, and again, that's that, that sixth sense that Watson has when it comes to running the football. And they're back in that attack mode that's been missing here in the second half. Again, a straight run, evades traffic. Deshaun Watson spinning down near the 20. You said it'd be a huge part of the game plan tonight. And it has been 18 more there, Kirk. Yep, follows Maverick Morris and his running back, Wayne Gallman. Great block downfield also by Richard, the tight end. You can see he is he's a different guy tonight with so much at stake. Drew Bailey was in on the tackle for Louisville, and he is being attended to. They're looking at that right knee as we check in with Cassidy Hubbard for an update. Thanks, Chris. Number 17, Michigan State coming off their loss to Wisconsin, visiting Indiana, both teams 2-1. and one. And Ricky Jones with a 22-yard touchdown catch. Sparty and the Hoosiers all tied up at 14 in the fourth quarter. Chris Herbie, back to you. Interesting day in the Big Ten, Kirk. Yep. Michigan kind of slugging past Wisconsin. A seven-point victory in the big house for the Wolverines. No problem for the Buckeyes routing Rutgers earlier today. You know, Iowa knocked up by Northwestern you know, with Ohio State. They didn't do that last year against anybody. So you could say, well, it's Rutgers or it's this or it's that. I can tell you right now, Ohio State's playing with a different energy than they played with all of last year until they got to maybe the Michigan or the Notre Dame game. They're playing athletic on both sides of the ball and hungry, something we haven't seen. To me, they're, they're up here, and then there's the rest of the Big Ten right now, just based on what we've seen after the first five weeks. Strong playoff contender, as is the winner of this game. Exactly one month from now, the first rankings released by the college football playoff 
selection committee, November 1st. Clemson, of course, was number one in all weeks of the rankings a year ago. Crowd booing, speculating that Drew Bailey may have gone down to try to slow down the momentum that's been created on this drive. He's off the field right now. As the Tigers set up from the 20, first down. Big to Gallman, and Watson delivers over the middle. And the catch made by Leggett lost the ball. A turnover. Chucky Williams, who earlier made the pick in this quarter, has got the football. He's still running. Alexander yeah. knocked it loose, Kirk. Yeah. Another turnover. Alexander has been everywhere tonight. Doesn't give up on this play. It actually, it's a really well-designed play by Clemson. But watch Alexander against the big man. I don't know if that ball ended up hitting the ground. Nonetheless, whether it's an interception or a fumble, it's Louisville ball. He, he runs for a few steps. Yeah, it'll be a fumble recovery. So, the second turnover of the half for Clemson. Four in the game now. Radcliffe takes the toss. Makes a cut and picks up a first down. I, I, I mean, that, that is a big, big play again by Jair, Jair Alexander, who's been active tonight in coverage and in run support. Williams ends up coming up with it, but it was Alexander who made the play. They get the ball. It's incredible. Clemson looked like they were finally regaining this momentum and about to go into the end zone. And Alexander makes that play to get the ball back to their offense. Radcliffe again, cuts it back, short game. Bayer Alexander, the first five games of this season is, is looking like an All-American player. Oh, yeah, Louisville. yeah. Based on the, the games against Florida State, tonight against Clemson, they're more high-profile games. He's playing as well as any corner I've seen in his first month of the season. Remember Dabo walked off and said, hey, we're plus one in the turnover. Well, now they're minus one after the two turnovers here in the second half. Another handoff up the middle. A di different kind of attack from Petrino tonight. I think different than he expected and hoped it would be. Not airing the ball out with nearly the success. No, again, he's had to be very, very patient with his his attack. It has everything to do with the, the talent that he's facing and the scheme from Brent Venables and how aggressive they have been. Attacking, blitzing, and confusing Lamar Jackson in the line. He's had to go find different ways to try to move the ball without the big play ability. Lead seven on third down. Here comes the pressure again. Jackson flips it complete. And that's Smith and the back rumbling deep into Clemson territory. Another big third down conversion. He's been a stud tonight. Yeah, they go zone blitz. Watch Christian Wilkins. He's actually dropping in coverage. He's 300 pounds. So Brent Venables rolls the dice trying to create some confusion with the blitz look. But he's got the big fella, 42, who can't get out there against a running back with a 300-pound defensive end trying to cover the flat. 29-yard gain. Maxson straight back from the pocket. Good protection delivers. A strike down inside the 15-yard line to James Quick. And what a turnaround. Louisville threatening again. Did not reroute him. Tankersley did not get his hands at all to slow him down. It made it easy for Lamar Jackson to squeeze it in between the corner and the safety. The corner has got to get his hands on quick. Not let him get around that quickly, that easily. This drive has been quick. Inside of two minutes, they moved it 65 yards. Jackson keeps it, spins, still on his feet, diving down first and goal. Now you see the slipperiness of this quarterback as a runner. That was three, almost four defenders that had their hands on him. Let's count them here. Good read. One, two, three, almost a fourth to take it into the end zone. That's Lamar Jackson right there. That was a sideways sidestep. And Jadar Johnson, Tigers safety being looked at back at the 15 yard line. In the meantime, that huge completion to, to Smith there on third and long, setting him up. First and goal, final minute of what's been a terrific third quarter for Louisville and a sloppy quarter for Clemson. No doubt about it. 
That's why you play 60 minutes. That's why you make adjustments at halftime. That's, that's what separates the men from the boys. Who can play 60 minutes in a game with this much hype, this much anticipation, jump out to a big lead? But you know a team like like Louisville, the veteran team that they have with Bobby Petrino, they're not going to give up. They're just going to keep swinging. When you thought, though, Clemson Kirk would pull momentum back, then leg it, and the ball punched out by Alexander. Williams picked it up. They convert the long third down. And now Jackson hasn't set up a yard from the goal line. It hasn't been easy for him to punch it in, though, tonight from close. They've been down here four times, only two touchdowns. Jackson Cooper and scores standing up and Louisville is roared right back in this game. It's the first time that we have seen the, the Clemson defense on its heels. A little bit unsure, a little bit maybe questioning and, and flat-footed as opposed to confident, sure, sound, efficient, pinning their ears, knowing what's coming before it happens. Here's Creaky with the PAT. He's had one blocked already and knocked it through. That's big as it cuts the lead to two. So here's the play that really swung momentum, and it looked like the Tigers were going to stretch their lead. Like it was close. Alexander has been a star tonight, knocks it out at the six-yard line, and then Williams picks it up and returns it. And Chucky Mint Williams comes up with it, and just like that, seven plays, 77 yards after the turnover. They get deep into Clemson territory. It's a great read, a good field. How many times has he scored standing up this year? But a lot. <laughs> a lot. But tonight, he hasn't had a lot of those opportunities. They, like I said, if you go back and really look at that replay, you can see that Clemson defense flat-footed. They have not done that a lot tonight. It's, it's been much more coming after number eight. Yeah, no quarterback has ever in the last 20 years anyway have been responsible for more touchdowns. That's passes and runs through five games. 27 now for Jackson. That's game on now. Final 45 seconds, and it's gonna it's gonna come down to the the final 15 here at Death Valley in a huge impact game. This is Artavis Scott back at the return position from the five, and the veteran receiver be knocked down near the 25 yard line. Monday night on ABC, you catch a new crime drama from the executive producer of Criminal Minds, Conviction. Starring Haley Atwell, premieres Monday at 10, 9 central on ABC. Look, if you're Clemson and Dabo Sweeney and his coordinators, there's no need, just like we talked about with Louisville, no need to panic, no need to change the approach. I think if anything, you, you again, have a veteran quarterback. You trust him. You continue to attack. You continue with the game plan. They feed Gallman. He cuts it back, and Gallman hauled down at the 35, first down yardage. It's really the first time all year we've seen Wayne Gallman resemble the back that he was a year ago. He was a workhorse week one against Auburn, but he's been elusive in the back that went for over 1,500 yards a year ago. And he's hit exactly 100 yards rushing tonight on 12 carries. 8.3 per carry has the touchdown on his birthday. McLeod in motion. He takes the little pitch there, breaks the tackle in the backfield, and battles hard, but it'll be a gain of only about three as the final seconds tick away in the fourth quarter. All right, 100 days from the national championship game. Two teams that feel they're on track for the playoff. We'll battle to the final quarter at Death Valley. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Fourth quarter coming up. ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC and a presentation of the ACC on ESPN as the defending conference champion Clemson Tigers try to protect their house here and take a huge step toward another division title. Second and seven, nothing doing. Stuff right at the line is Goldman. I'm in third and long now. Nice job by the linebackers. Defensive line eating up the, the blocks. 
Kelsey coming in and Stacy Thomas those two inside linebackers been very active tonight against the run. This is what Louisville wants. This is where they want to get to Sean Watson. He's third in long situations. Tigers three of seven in third down tonight. Hurts usually comes from the blitz right up the middle here. He and Devontae Fields right next to each other. Watson trying to escape the pressure just dumps it into the ground to avoid a big loss. They were all over him. Keith Kelsey from his linebacker position. Yeah, we just talked about Hearns and how he can come after you. Watch the left guard here. First year starter Taylor Hearn trying to deal with that pressure. Look at that power, the quickness. Third down, they're pinning their ears coming after you. And Taylor Hearn right that time, the sophomore, no chance to give his quarterback with pressure right up the middle, which is an absolute no-no on third down to try to get, if you, unless you want your quarterback to have, just have to throw it away or take the sack. Hearns is a quick dude, isn't he? He's Alexander. been tormenting quarterbacks all season long. So Alexander back inside his 30. Louisville's going to get the ball back down just two. And a muff there. There's a scrum battling for it is Alexander. He's had a couple of big plays that had almost been a miscue, but he does retain possession. Incredible 18 point halftime cushion for the Tigers has all but vanished as the Cardinals take over down 28 26. Cassidy Hubbard with your studio update. Michigan State hasn't lost consecutive games since 2012, but in trouble tonight. Mitchell Page with a touchdown catch. He also threw one earlier in Indiana with the lead with about three to play. Back to you guys. Cassidy, thank you. Louisville with the football now, down by two. And for a 16-point third quarter. Very different expression on Lamar Jackson's face in that timeout than we saw earlier. Trying to escape the pocket here. Does get some room, does tiptoe, and then takes a shot, gets out of bounds. Remember, he lost his cool. And they were losing the street fight that was the first half. If they're not trailing all season long, Kirk, wondered how would they respond down 18 and a half time? Very well is the answer. We, we wondered all week how would they respond in this environment because you knew adversity was coming, something they've not faced all year. Throughout this run, they haven't been challenged. It's been very easy. We wondered how would they handle this adversity, this crowd, this defense. Boy, they have shown a lot tonight. Jackson flips it. Hikatini's been a huge weapon. They just have not been able to cover him, whether it's been a backer or a DB, and he's loose out across the 45. Good read by Lamar Jackson. There's a blitz there by Ben Boulware. And by reading this blitz, it's just a quick little hot. Get the ball out to the tight end. Easy read, easy throw, first down. Louisville has scored in each of its last four possessions. Field goal late in the first half. Touchdown, field goal, touchdown here in the second half. Jackson, one to look left, now fires across the middle, and that's a short gain by Jalen Smith uh, near midfield. You gotta give, we're talking a lot about Lamar Jackson, but you've gotta go back to the offensive line. It's not as if the, the plan has changed from Clemson. They're still bringing the pressure. They brought two middle linebackers, that time picked up, and Finally, you get a chance to see Jalen Smith get his hands on the ball. He's usually a big play guy. He's got eight yards there, but that's his first catch. Crowd, which has been listless, trying to get back in and inspire this defense. Jackson takes off, slips a tackle, slips into the secondary, bumped out of the 30, and now you're seeing the Lamar Jackson that lit up college football the first month. Yeah, he, he is reading the flow of the defense here, and he has the backside guard polling. Watch the flow here and watch the balls in there. He reads this and because they go to the outside, they get stretched. He pulls the ball out of the running back's arms and cuts in behind his left guard who pulled around on a power play. You got 18 Kirk and suddenly Jackson's approaching a hundred yard rushing game. You got 94 looking to throw on first down. A lot of time shoots it down the sideline. Jump ball Karam knocked away. Bonifant was battling Johnson. And then they kick it to the tight end, tried to make a little move to the inside and back outside, and there's going to be a flag on Ben Boulware. Holding number 10 on defense, 10 yard penalty. That's good coverage there. Automatic. First down. But where he was looking, he was staring his tight end down, Hickettini, who we had some success earlier on that route. But Ben Boulware locked him up. 
Boulware has had a terrific game, Kirk. He's had a career-high 15 tackles. Three tackles for loss, including a sack, but that's a that's a crucial penalty right there. Yeah. Boulware just, uh, he, he, he is very good in coverage. He does a good job as a leader of this defense, but Piccatini, one of the top tight ends that, to me in college football, because he's so elusive, he does such a good job with his routes. He fooled Boulware on the move, and Boulware locked him up there, and it's a good call. Because it's downfield, unlike the previous defensive holding call, this is an automatic first down. Right here. Can grab onto the jersey, and you can see the quarterbacks looking, waiting, waiting for Hickettini to break free, but he just couldn't get away from the hold of Boulware. All the penalty problems in the first half for Louisville. They had nine. No flags for the Cardinals in the third quarter and so far in the fourth quarter. Clemson's had some, and it's been costly. It's Radcliffe in the pistol. And that's Hickettini in motion, and now a false start. Something. They hadn't had that happen in a while. I just jinxed them there. They've yeah. been so composed. False yeah. start. <laughs> Something we, we saw a lot of Five yard penalty. in the Four first down. half. Yeah, again, that's that's Tobias Hughley. He's an ex walk on, he's been a three year starter. He's got his degree, he's going to get his master's. Very smart offensive lineman. A couple of mistakes tonight you don't expect to see from him. Had the snap earlier that caught. Jackson by surprise. Quarterback, keeper, nowhere to run and drop for a big loss by Christian Wilkins in the corner, Ryan Carter. Uh, this is a misread by Lamar Jackson. This time Wilkins stays outside. Watch, he's reading 42. He stays outside. That's a give read. He gives that to the back. Instead, he holds on to it, thinking he can overcome the size of Wilkins. But Wilkins keeps the edge of the defense and forces it back inside. Good job by the big fella. And a bad read by Jackson. Penalty and now a six-yard loss makes it second and 21. Jackson delivers a high ball. Again, caught by Smith. Terrific catch by the physical runner who fights back to the 22. Good hands. Big guy in Edmond. 175 pounds holding on for dear life. Smith is the power back. Look at the hands here. Hmm. 225 pounds. Edmund, as I said, 175. He's going for the strip. You better grab his legs. You're not going to bring him down. Right, they've been bringing the linebackers, Joseph and Boulware, quite a bit. Third and 12, crucial because the field goal game is shaky for the Cardinals. That's a catch made by Staples. It's not a first down, but it's a chip shot field goal if they want to give Creaky a chance to give Louisville the lead here. That was crucial because from where they were sitting before that completion, I don't know. Yeah, and it probably, probably <laughs> knowing him, he maybe ends up going for it, but feels a little bit more comfortable and confident they have a chance here to take this lead. Evan O'Hara had been the kicker at the beginning of the season. He was lifted in the Marshall game. Lanton Creaky was one of two in that game. Made a couple tonight. He's at the PAT blocks. This for the lead from 28. Take that, he says. Have all three been chip shots? And Louisville all the way back. A 19-zip run to take the lead. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Driving fast in downtown Clemson. <laughs> SO Club last night. Good year providing our aerial coverage. Make every drive a touchdown with superior performance from Goodyear Tires. Goodyear, official sponsor of the college football playoff. Did you expect, folks, a 19-0 run by the Louisville Cardinals the way that first half ended? Clemson had momentum. They had the football to begin this second half. Pass off of McLeod's hands, the interception, and that seemed to really spark Louisville. Adjustments, adjustments, and composure from Louisville. Freaky boots it deep, but not deep enough to prevent Scott from running it back. Little hurdle move. Artavis Scott makes a cut and is knocked down at the 30. Well, the last couple of meetings between these two, the only two in their history, have both been close. A couple years ago here, less than 500 combined yards of total offense. 
Dabo Sweeney's team able to just stop the Cardinals after Quick had been tackled inside the five. They get a big stop. They win it by six. And then last year in Louisville, Renfro, that was his first career touchdown. They seem to have things in control. A kickoff return by Samuel brought the Cardinals back in it, but it was Dabo dancing at the end. They win it by three. And this is the third chapter in this quickly blossoming rivalry. Watson now suddenly trailing by a point in the fourth quarter. Hands it off to Goldman and this Louisville defense has yeah. been stout yeah, after Todd, the break. Todd Grantham has this, has this group playing with some fire right now and, and confidence. Offense and defense feeding off of one another. Remember, this second half, Clemson did have one drive where they moved deep into Louisville territory before the turnover. A lot of that started with Deshaun uh, Watson running the football. Watson looking to throw. Thrown downfield, and it's intercepted. They test Jair Alexander again, and he makes the quarterback pay. What a night for him. Deshaun Watson just puts this ball up in the air and hopes Kane can come up with it. Just the wrong guy to test. For all the young corners out there, you don't see college corners find the football the way Jair Alexander does. You throw a fade on him, he's in not only in perfect position in phase, but he does a great job of looking up and locating the football and then has the ball skills to come down with it. Man, this guy gets better every single rep you watch this guy. I, I, you know, Grantham loves having him on defense. I, I maybe give him a shot at receiver. He no, no, wants no. to play Don't receiver. let him move from where he is <laughs> right, right now. He is You make perfect. a point. He's he forced perfect. three turnovers tonight. Two picks and a forced fumble. Now Jackson with the lead here. Thought about taking a deep shot and now escapes and look out. The sprinter in space. A little dead-legged move, and he's off and running inside the 15. Has this thing ever turned around? This is where he wants to try to get a wheel route down here, down to the right side. He's trying to find it, but because it's taken away, now he's able to create. They lost contain. This is just him being him. Finally out in the open space, he gave a little sweetness leg like kick there for Walter Payton. Dead leg move, 38-yard run, and Louisville suddenly trying to add to a lead here. This is Radcliffe, bouncing it hard inside. Wow, he's still going. Finally the whistle. Louisville is showing a lot of heart, a lot of determination. Clemson, you, you want to go out there? You, you want to be a team that can be a, a national championship team? Watch this little... <laughs> <laughs> Little dead leg and a little stiff arm. But Clemson, this whole half, you're waiting for somebody to make a play, somebody to step up and do something. And instead, it's been all Lamar Jackson and Louisville ones that's showing how badly they want it. And Jackson has regained his composure. He's been more in character after losing his cool in the first half. He's got it again. Tough run down near the 10. Dexter Lawrence stop it. It'll be third down. Dexter Lawrence from the outside. And Ben Boulware up in the front sets up a critical third down here. Exactly. How about this play? They need three. The lead is just one. Huge difference between seven or three in this possession, obviously. All I know is if you're Clemson, you better set the edge to your defense. You better make sure number eight can't get to the outside on, a, on an option play. He's trying to. No pitch. Gets the edge and scores standing up. You can expect it, you can try to defend it, but it's so tough to stop. Alexander's pick sets up another Jackson touchdown run. You've got to set the edge against number eight. You cannot let him get to the outside, and it is easy for him here. Nobody sets the edge. He walks to the outside, and there's that stiff arm again. That time he gave it to Van Smith. Shows you how physical he can be, wiry strong, as we say. How about your guy, Hecatini Kirk? He's made six catches. He made the block on Bulwer to help spring the quarterback. Freaky knocks it through. That was important as Louisville stretches the lead to eight and makes this a 26 nothing run. Don't go at Alexander the rest of the night if you're Deshaun Watson. No, Leave him alone. You challenge him, like I said, he's going to find the ball, come up with the interception, great ball skills, and there's Lamar Jackson being Lamar Jackson, and the Cardinals are up eight.
over on ESPN, UCLA up 14-7 in Arizona. And then following that game, Sports Center at night, Lisa Kearney and John Puchigras, all the highlights from another crazy day in college football. Major League Baseball, day two of the Ryder Cup. U.S. trying to hang on. Sports of tonight after the game also on the watch ESPN app. So Dabo Sweeney trying to get his offense collected here. Still a one possession game. Once up 18, now down eight. Scott again has some room. Artavis Scott dances, cuts it back, and is in the clear. Artavis Scott just the kicker to beat. And he angles him out of bounds, but the huge return sets up Clemson at the 23. 77 yards. So often when there's a bobble at the beginning of a return, defenders can get out of their lane. And I think that happened a little bit. It's set up perfectly off to the right. I thought he might stay to the right, but what vision and just instincts as a ball carrier. Remember, he played running back in high school. He's a guy who's just very, very gifted as a runner. And that cutback was just him. But they set it up nicely to the right. And now they've got a great opportunity to remember this is just a one possession game down eight. And the veteran makes a big impact as a returner. He's had kind of a frustrating season so far as a receiver and Watson three hard earned yards. Louisville filling the hole there and that was Josh Harvey Clements who actually hits his own guy. Watch this at the end. He's coming in from the top. Comes in, boom! Mm. Actually hits our guy Jair Alexander. Don't knock him out of the game. <laughs> Keep him in the game. Watson keeps it, pitches it across the middle. Touchdown, Williams! Another lightning quick massive momentum change on the kickoff return and now a two-point conversion for Clemson to try to tie it. Clemson did not hesitate on the play call right away lined up ball in the left half. Empty backfield. Watson for the end zone battered up and intercepted. And so the two-point try fails, and Louisville holds on to the lead. Kelsey deflected it. Well, back to the touchdown here. And because they're able to run the ball, watch the linebackers with the action right here. This is a very important part of the play because the linebackers come up, and now you have a play coming from the outside across the middle. Linebackers froze. Made it very easy for Williams to work his way across against Tremaine Washington. And the, because the linebackers were up, he had a great passing lane to be able to put that right over top of the linebackers. There's not a safety in the middle. In the blink of an eye, Clemson is right back in this game. And they tried to find Williams in the two-pointer, but Kelsey yep. got that big hand Kelsey, up there. Kelsey read the eyes of the quarterback, but the return by Artavis Scott gives Clemson life. And two plays later there in the end zone. And now the crowd is back into the game. First time probably since the end of the first half. You're right. And Watson, who now has four touchdown passes to go with three interceptions. One, to be fair, wasn't his fault. It was off the hands of the cloud. 89 yards rushing for the quarterback. And here we go. How much fun is this when a game with this much height lives up, up to it? Yeah. Up to it. It's been a rarity, these big ranked versus ranked matchups so far this season. Very few have been one score games. Low kick bounces around and it's scooped up at the 15. And Alexander, the big play man tonight, is knocked out just short of the 30. Talked about this QB duel in Death Valley, our Pacific Life game summary. It was a kind of a quiet start for both quarterbacks. Jackson heating up now here in the second half. He's thrown for 237, rushed for 139. Big surprise right there with the three interceptions from Deshaun Watson. And now Louisville will have to face the noise and show some poise here inside of seven minutes. Six straight possessions. They produce points. All five here in the second half. 
First down blitz. They pick it up. And Jackson flips it low and incomplete. Kind of short-armed out there for Staples. A short arm because he, he felt pressure from Carlos Watkins. A chip a little move here and comes around by working his way around. Doesn't allow Lamar Jackson to step into the throw. He kind of throws that off his back foot. He had an open receiver, but good pressure. Nice stunt up front by the Tigers defense. Second down from the pocket, flips it short to Smith, who came out of the backfield. He's wrestled down across the 35 by Van Smith. That'll be third to about three. If they're going to pressure you, that's a great way to just kind of let that pressure come. It's almost like a little slip screen. Let that pressure come and just throw the ball where those linebackers were before they blitz. You know, it gives them a very good chance here now on third and three. Some of the Tiger players on the sidelines jumping around. Here comes the heat. Jackson batted down. And he had Hickettini wide open in the flat. But Watkins batted it away. And they just lost him here. Wide open. But Watkins with another big play. You saw him pressure the quarterback. And this time, watch him time this up right here. Watch him get his hand up and knock that ball away. But you can see Hickettini, nobody close to him. That's an easy first down for the Cardinals. What do they teach these guys? If you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up. Ray an Ray athlete, McLeod. knock it down. He timed it up. It's Ray Ray McLeod trying to set up the Tigers in good field position. King gets a high, deep, booming punt away. McLeod has to retreat and call fair catch. So Clemson down by two, 6 11 to go. Welcome back to Clemson where the Tigers trail by two late in the fourth. If you're a Tiger fan, some potentially difficult news. After that last drive, quarterback Deshaun Watson came off the field, received medical attention. That entire drive on the inside of his right knee, he motioned like someone hit him on the outside. He's obviously back in there, going to uh, try and still play, but we'll see if he can run the same. All right. Thanks, Sam. It was D'Angelo Brown, a 310 pounder, who fell on the quarterback's knee. He looks like he's okay. Gallman. Stopped by Alexander, who's now in some pain. It's such a big part of their defense. It's obvious pain. But boy, that report from Sam about Deshaun Watson, that was D'Angelo Brown, at over 300 pounds coming down on his right knee. Of course, the knee was the problem for Watson at the end of the 2014 oh. season. Now, Alexander kind of holding the inside hate, of his hate, leg. Hate to see that. Yeah, you, you can see big 97. Right there, he gets a hold of him and then watch him mm. come down, all of his weight down on that knee. And when Deshaun first got up, you think he's okay, but watch him kind of work the knee around a little bit, start to kind of stretch it, shake it out a little bit. In the meantime, the focus for the Louisville trainers is Alexander, who appeared to be in a whole lot of pain. This is the guy that returned those two punts against Florida State, one for a touchdown, and then has been a huge part of this defensive effort tonight with a couple of picks and a forced fumble. Yeah, and, and again, he's physical. He comes off of a block by Scott. And just undercuts Wayne Gallman, who is a physical runner, really a slasher. Got so Lawrence Watson. Walker, Kirk, number 20, is going to have to now, step into some very big shoes on that edge. On that. Sean Watson, I'm sure they'll keep a safety over top of him for, to protect him. And then second and four, they, they flip right it short. It. They go right in that direction. And the catch is made first down by Williams. See if they if they do protect him on that particular play. They did not. They brought a blitz. And the safety who was behind Alexander who just checked in, he actually he had to cover a man in the slot man to man. The motion Gallman back in. Watson from the pocket goes right down that sideline and just juggling attempt by Scott. Incomplete as they did take a deep shot yeah. testing Alexander's smart, backup. Smart move by Watson. He's, you see a guy that's been standing around not playing in the football. Welcome to the game. We've been playing the game for three hours. Oh, he's saying just close. missed it. Just missed it. Heck of an effort again by Scott who almost comes up with his catch but smart by Clemson to go right after him. Good to see Alexander back in the lineup. He's a quick healer. 
He's matched up on Kane on the top. Watson looks that direction. Now he escapes, flips it back low. And it's caught there by Trevian Thompson. His first catch tonight. First down, Clemson in business. Good job there. Again, just patiently waiting. He's not looking to scramble to take off. He's scrambling to buy time and wait for a receiver to break free. It's exactly what happened. Got his shoulders turned and made a good throw. Gallman hammers forward inside the final five minutes now. A 26 nothing run by Louisville after halftime to take the lead. Clemson stops it with a touchdown. And field goal away from taking the lead here. So much at stake in this football game for these two teams. How fitting that it comes down in the last five minutes with the game on the line. Watson steps up and now spins back into traffic, picks up a couple of yards. It'll be third and six. He does appear to be struggling with that knee that Sam yeah, talked about. Yeah, absolutely. Not quite the same aggressiveness when he pulled that ball down. A big third down. He was helped up and Grimace was evident. See if the Cardinals spot that Kirk and try to bring some pressure. Sean perhaps with some reduced mobility. Back in the pocket. Flips it across the middle. Caught. Kane continues a huge night and fights down to the 31. Well, this is a good job. Watch this linebacker right here who fights on the underneath route. And the anticipation there by Deshaun Watson to Kane, he was anticipating the linebacker Thomas would come up, which he did, and he puts the ball into a very tight window and a great throw there on third down. They get 24 in the third and five. They're in Hugel's field goal range already. 12, 12 men on the field for, for some confusion. The flag comes in, a free play. Watson fires back, catches Leggett open, Leggett rumbling free, dead inside the 10 scores! <laughs> With a free play, Watson took advantage. And Leggett rumbles all the way to the end zone. It had been a quiet night for Jordan until that one. There was confusion from the very beginning on that play from Louisville. The sidelines trying to get the attention of the, de the defense with 12 men on the field. And you'll see in this replay. What a drive, though, Kirk. Eight plays, 85 yards in 257 with the lead four. They'll go for two again. How about the third down throw on the last play before the touchdown? 24 yarder to Kane. Gallman motions out. Watson, pop pass. Got it. Leg it. They practiced the jump pass a lot this week and saved it for a two-point play that makes the lead six with 3.14 to go. Yeah, if you look at this defense, you can see there's confusion. Right now, you already have 12 men on the field. And at some point, Alexander says, all right, I'm going to head out. Now, the play is right here. The tight end is going to delay and then work his way right here. You see the running back clear it out. Everybody's going deep. They lose Leggett right here. Right here. Good job. The play is designed to get the ball to him. And I'll tell you, Leggett at 260, once he made that catch, he turned in, showed a lot of speed himself. He had the tricky touchdown last year against Louisville. He lined up as a left tackle. They lost him. Watson hit him. And another huge play. And how about the Tigers roaring back here with a couple of touchdowns to reclaim a lead that's now six. What does Lamar Jackson have up his sleeve and what has developed after a scoreless first quarter into the kind of quarterback duel we expected? Two-point play. Love the call there. The pop pass there. Jump pass, jumping crowd. Samuel 
He won a kickoff back to the house against the Tigers a year ago. Tries to set up Jackson in good field position if he can. Bugle with a nice kickoff. And it'll be a touchback. at and inside access. Earlier today, you roll out the orange carpet. And the Tigers make that dramatic entrance. After all the emotion, kind of a slow start for both offenses. But a furious finish here in Death Valley. Louisville. 314 to work with, 75 yards away. Jackson back delivers near side. And a battle for the ball won by Staples, complete for a first down, a long throw by Jackson. People, people still want to question Lamar Jackson's ability to make a throw. Looks pretty good, doesn't he? Drops back when he has time to throw, throws in rhythm. Good timing there with Staples, who beats his man, Marcus Redmond. Pretty good way to start a drive with this building and stadium about to collapse. It's so loud in here. Jackson again. Spinning, escaping, slips and slides his way for an eight-yard gain. Should have been a loss. Absolutely. And, you know, when you're talking about Dexter Lawrence and Christian Wilkins, having both of them having their hands on you in the backfield, and you somehow shake them. What a difference. You know, a first down sack for an eight-yard gain. Enormous in this situation. Jackson from the pocket delivers a short pass. It's a first down. Sipatini night by Van Smith. He moved the sticks again. He's had a big night tonight. Looks like he, he may have to, I don't know if he's cramping or what it might be, but he's going to have to sit out. He is, he is a big factor in this offense. They need him back out there. Trying to get him some water, get him hydrated. The wear and tear of this game beginning to show on both sides. Six of his seven catches have been for first down. And Jackson in the flat, they lose track of Big Smith, and he rumbles into Tiger territory at the 45. After that first throw, Clemson, I think, really it created some confidence that this is going to be fine. Everything's fine. Lamar Jackson, I think it, what it did is it forced Clemson to sit back a little bit defensively. And you know at some point they're going to crank back that pressure with the outside pressure and the middle linebackers blitzing. But Lamar Jackson right now from up here looks to be very very comfortable after watching this defense and their plan and how they're trying to slow him down Second and one option keeper still dancing in the clear Jackson now shows the power and gets down inside the 30 How about the vision and watch this linebacker flow you better be careful doing that with number eight you start to overrun a play and get too aggressive, he senses that and has the vision to be able to cut back anywhere on this field. And Jackson delivers the throw far side. They use the cushion quick, makes the catch, and he's knocked out of bounds. The clock will stop with a minute 32. And two timeouts. College football, the first down, out of bounds. This it, is an maybe eternity. Maybe you don't want to score two I was going to say, this is, this is an eternity for Lamar Jackson. Time is not an issue. It's about execution and trying to find the open man. Jackson rips a quick throw and a catch again by Reggie Bonifant, who gets involved now. They're inside the 15 with a minute 27 to play. Bonifant, 6'3", 210 pounds. Great size. I mean, think about what's at stake here. You're, you're talking about with Florida State loss, you're talking about the winner's going to go to the ACC championship game. Maybe the Heisman Trophy on the line. I mean, you're talking about a lot at stake in a game that's played on October 1st. Now, a month away from those first playoff rankings, and again, because Louisville's already destroyed the Seminoles, their schedule is so favorable going forward. If they can come out of here with a victory, and as we remind you about the Ford wrap up show coming up after this, if they get out of here, we'll show you the schedule. It is incredibly favorable. They'll be a solid favorite to roll to the ACC championship game. The only team that can beat Louisville if they win tonight is is Louisville. No, nobody can beat them on their schedule. Uh, Houston, I, I, I beg your pardon. Houston, I'm thinking ACC. Yeah. Houston would be. Think about think about what Thursday Houston's night doing game. watching this game. Houston wants Louisville to win this game in the worst way. 
That would be a huge game in November. But as far as ACC is concerned, the winner of this game is, is headed to Orlando in the ACC championship game, in my opinion. Clemson trying to protect this lead. Backed up. Louisville 12 yards from a go-ahead touchdown. Bulwer's had a monster night. Can he come up with one more big play? Smith just hammers and tests the middle, and Bulwer's there to stop him. Not necessarily in, in a hurry. Bobby Petrino trusts this team, this offense. They have struggled when they've gotten down inside that five-yard line to get touchdowns. Second half, it's been a little bit of a different story, but first half, that was a, a challenge for them. Remember the big stand a year ago here? They stopped Notre Dame from yeah. trying to get in and force overtime. Jackson rolls out of the pocket and sprints out of bounds. An aggressive shove inside the 10. It will be third down. 48 seconds to go. Really good coverage there by Clemson. Nowhere for Lamar Jackson to go with the ball. And good pursue there by the, the safety. Johnson sets up this third down. Should mention Picatinny is back in the lineup. Yeah, he's hurting, but he just trotted on for this crucial play. Looks like he's going to be lined up on the left side. I got you, buddy. There. Jackson spins, escapes, still alive, fires to the end zone, incomplete. Wow. Somehow he avoided the but, loss of the fourth down. He avoids the, bl the blitz. The blitz, uh, the corner that time, Carter had him. And then Watkins had him. Blitz comes from the right. Looks like he might be down. Watkins, I thought, had him. A, a third defender comes in. There's Bullware. And look how close he came to finding his tight end, Hickettini. Van because Smith was in coverage there. There's the corner blitz. My gosh, he is so elusive. Three different Tiger defenders had a chance at him. But how about how he kept his eyes downfield, waiting for the tight end to come free? Almost made the play. Coverage down there was great. So it comes down to this play. After all this back and forth, after more than 1,000 yards of total offense, 80 points. Jackson's moved Louisville 66 yards, but it all comes down to a fourth down and seven. First down about the two yard line. Still have one timeout left. Gotta believe that Brent Venables will come after him. That's where they've had their most success disguising pressure and coming late. Does Jackson have some magic late? He's alone in the backfield. And they show blitz yep. and got the offensive line to flinch, Kirk. Yep. Number 72, offense. Five yard penalty. That's what we saw a lot of in the first half when the crowd was a factor, the offensive line struggling, anticipating when the blitz is coming and jumping. But it does give them a little bit more room to work with for the receivers and for the passing game. Got to get to the two-yard line to keep hope alive. Jackson flips it short, quick. Works free, fights, spins out of bounds, did not get there. Did not get there, came up a yard short as Marcus Edmond saves the game for Clemson. Didn't you just say something about if this feels like Notre Dame? Yep. It really does in the same end zone. The Tigers defense comes up with a stop. He's in the inside. He works to the outside. Nobody's in the flat. Quick's trying to get to that first down marker. Comes well short. Did he have headed back inside there? I thought he would have tried to fight to get the first down. He might 
and have lost track of where he needed to get yeah. exactly. Because I think if he'd known that, he would have tried to fight yeah, inside by his way. You know, lowering your shoulder and try and run over the defender. As it turned out, that false start penalty five yards back perhaps did cost him. They're going to check the spot on replay, but I think it's going to confirm what we've seen. And Jackson got to get to the two yard line for the first down. If he cuts it back right there, he's got a chance yeah. to try to muscle. Steps out of bounds at the back. three. And Jackson throws for 295, runs for 162, three total touchdowns. But the frustration yeah. is evident oh. as Clemson protects their house here tonight. I know that all the committee members are watching this game. Louisville didn't do anything, in my opinion, to hurt themselves in the big picture. There are a lot of people that thought at the beginning of the year you might get two teams from the ACC or the SEC or the Big Ten, maybe one of those years where you get two from one conference. Yeah. If, if Clemson's able to win out and Louisville ends up losing one game and this is their one loss after the way they fought in this environment. And you would include, again, just for argument's sake, potentially beating an undefeated Houston team. Louisville needs to keep their heads up. There is still plenty for them to accomplish this year despite this loss here tonight. Clemson, it's a short week. They got to go to BC on Friday. NC State, they got to buy before visiting Tallahassee, where they've lost 11 of the last 12 times. Knowles with two conference losses. And Watson rallying, making some huge plays on that eventually game-winning touchdown drive wasn't perfect it wasn't pretty and clean from his perspective but it's winning an ACC showdown a quarterback duel in Death Valley that lived up to the height and then some as the sea of orange engulfs this field a yard short for Jackson and the Cardinals on that fourth down play. Somewhere in that sea of humanity is Sam with Davos Sweeney. Yes, we got a little security, Coach. That is a huge win. How would you describe the significance of this one? Say that again. How would you describe the significance of this huge win? Well, we want to be 12 and 0. And you can't win 12 till you win 5. So, there's a great win. Listen, Lou will play the hearts out. We stuck it up in the third quarter. We had the right plays, but we fumbled the ball, turned it over. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you either have the heart or you don't. You have the will to win or you don't. And what can you say, man? Our fans were awesome. And at the end of the day, this is 19 in a row at home. And we're moving on to the next one. Thank you, Lord. Sean was able to do down the stretch. A guy falls on his knee. He's out there a little hobbled. What can you say about your quarterback tonight? Well, here's what's great about tonight. A lot of adversity. I mean, you got balls that are tipped, perfect throws, interceptions, some crazy things. You throw a touchdown pass to Leggett, he gets a fumble, but they kept playing. We always talk about just play the next play. But at the end of the day, us coaches get way too much credit. This is a game, players make plays. That's how you win football games. We didn't make enough of them in the third quarter. I love my staff because they put the players in position to be successful. But in the fourth quarter, when you had to have it, Clemson tough. We're built for this. We're built for games like this. And those guys got the heart of the champion, and they showed it tonight. Love my staff, love my team, love these fans. That's what it's all about. It don't get no better than this. I'm just telling you. Well, all I know is it's going to take you a while to get out of here. Good luck, Coach. Oh, you got to love it. Thank and you. We'll send it over to Tom Rinaldi and with Deshaun Watson. Sam, thank you very much. Deshaun, while we were waiting, you looked up into the sky. You just shook your head and said, what a game. How would you describe it? I, I couldn't even describe it. It was just one of the best experiences I've ever had. Uh, just the ups and downs. You know, I just love the Clemson fans who stand and sticking with us and believing. I love my teammates and coaches for, you know, sticking together and believing in each other. And, hey, we, we pulled it out.
26 points unanswered by Louisville to take the lead. What did you tell your team? We're going to win it. Just believe. What was the game winning? God believe. They came up to me and said, let's be great. And that's what we wanted to do. So everyone just, you know, was on their P's and Q's. Everyone stayed true to themselves. And we drove down and got the touchdown. And, you know, we made plays. Like, like Coach Sweeney said, you know, players make plays. And that's what we did. We saw the hit that you took on the inside of the right knee. It was clear that you were in pain deep into the fourth quarter. What's the state of how you're doing physically right now? And what did you have to overcome? Oh, I'm good. You know, I'm a, I'm a soldier, so I'm going to play through it without uh, regardless. But, you know, I'm fine. Nothing serious. And, uh, you know, we're just going to celebrate tonight and then get ready for Boston College. Finally, to show there was a great deal of talk about the quarterback on the other side. He got a tremendous amount of attention. What did you show folks tonight? Oh, you know, Deshaun Watson's still here. You know what I mean? We, we have ups and downs, have adversity. Still getting things clicking on the offensive side, but, you know, you got to give props to Lamar. You know, he's a, he's a great player. He's a hard worker. You know, he didn't quit to the very end. And then, you know, Louisville's a great team. So, you know, give them props, give them credit. You know, it was a hard-fought battle, but, hey, Tigers on top. Congratulations on the win, Deshaun. Thank you. Chris. All right, Tom, thank you. Props to Lamar Jackson, indeed, as he walks off disappointed but as you said Kirk this loss does not knock Louisville out of the playoff not consideration all. not the way this nope. happened tonight the All-State bus presenting this week's All-State street cred yeah well, we waited because there's so many good games today to find out the team that had the most impressive performance you of course have North Carolina of Tennessee but tonight it's Clemson 42 to 36 top five matchup two teams that did not disappoint you can see what the defense Deshaun did and 19th straight home wins, so they're definitely deserving. That's a school record for home wins, and it's also the longest streak in the country because Florida State lost earlier today to North Carolina on that late field goal. And the fans, many of them making their way up the hill. The Tigers ran down to begin this dramatic evening as Watson is congratulated. It's a short week. He says he's okay. He says he's a soldier. No doubt he's right about that. They have to go to Boston College, which it can be a difficult oh, yeah. defense at times and again it's just a Friday night game so with what what's happened to Florida State right now especially with their defense a couple losses the winner of this game's in the driver's seat and you got to believe Clemson unless they implode in a game they have a great shot to, to get into the ACC championship game now and, uh, and, and eventually ultimately their goal of being one of the playoff teams but as I said earlier Louisville is not out of it they have a great opportunity to, to kind of regroup and play the rest of their conference schedule and how ironic that louisville houston game there will be a lot at stake if those two teams keep playing good ball and match up later in the month of november but this was a a classic an instant classic and uh, just a, a fun game to watch good news for the louisville perspective they had a bye to kind of Good. rest and recover from this Good game. And they're going to need it. Yeah. Cardinals play their hearts up, but the Tigers are stout at home, as always. And their stand on fourth down stops Louisville a yard short to preserve a classic 42-36 victory here in Death Valley. You love it when your showdowns live up to the hype and more. This QB duel in Death Valley get out to a slow start. There were some mistakes on both sides, but both Jackson and Watson showing a ton of heart to fight through adversity. And Clemson survives to stay unbeaten 42-36. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Tonight's game was produced by Bill Bennell, directed by Derek Mobley, on behalf of our entire talented, dedicated crew down here in Death Valley. For Chris Kirk, Tom, and Samantha saying so long. Ford wrap-up show is coming up to Cassidy Hubbard.